and welcome to a huge episode of the Min Max Show, a place about games, friends, getting better. My name is Ben Hansen, joined by Janet Garcia. Hello. Joined by Jacob Geller. Hardwood Core 6. <laughs> Jeff um, Marquiafava, as he prefers to be called. That's me. Kelsey Lewin. DLCs are games. Kyle Hilliard. <laughs> DLCs are added to games that already came out in a different year. Yeah, sure. Hey, sure. Haley oh, McLean. No. Hello. Sarah Pazorski. Hello. Some new games feel like DLC, and they're not DLC. And they're Isn't the best weird? games of the year. And Leo Vader, everybody. Games are fluid. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is, everybody, uh, the two tens, named in honor of the two ends in Min-Max. This is the first half of our debate about the greatest games of 2023 a year. Many people say is the best year ever for gaming. We'll be the judges of that by each going around and <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> for the video viewers I apologize uh, but each going around and putting a game on the list and then the goal is we're whittling that down to the 210. Some would say the top 20 games of the year and then we're ranking them in the next episode of this very podcast so thank you everybody for watching on youtube you can always subscribe to the mid max show on your favorite podcast app it's a free podcast so we appreciate that boost wherever you listen to podcasts now it's important to remember with the two tens first and foremost everybody watching everybody listening you will disagree with us it's not a surprise when you say hey wait a minute this isn't how i'd make the list I understand that. You will disagree, and it's okay to disagree. We all, as a group, need to accept that. Um, obviously, everybody here is equal. Um, the big reminder, we're not trying to gauge what the industry thinks of the best games of 2023. All we can do, the most fair thing we can do, is measure our collective passions for these games. We're being wrung like a bar rag, and however much passion is filling the cup, that's what we're trying to get uh, across to you in the two tens debate. Um, now I'm curious what you think about this. Why is it a bar rig though? I don't Cause know. Cause that's just gross. It, it could have been like a sponge, you know? Yeah. Some, okay. Like dishes. Bar rag mops up from a d bunch of different people and stuff, you know? Uh, what do you think we are, dude? Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyways, <laughs> on that note too, like, I think it's an interesting thing and, and we've never really explained it this way, but I, th I think that if you bounced off a game, but it's not really your cup of tea, I don't think that should drag it down on the list. Do you know what I mean? I think games can be- Do you have a game in mind that makes you say No, this? I'm just saying like in general. Did. No, 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 I, I, well, we'll save some discussion maybe. It's called Lalder's Mate Tree? I honestly, I think a little bit of that, yeah. I think, Dude, I think I games Lalder's can be- Lalder's Mate Tree, that should be number one. <laughs> I think they could be like dragged down and dinged a little bit if you were personally disappointed by the game. If it's a game you're actually looking forward to, then you play it and you're like, I don't think so. Um, Leo, I know we talked a little bit about it before. Does that seem like a fair barometer? Because it's like, eh, I tried it, it wasn't for me. But if it's not your genre, then you shouldn't be penalized for that, you know? I agree. It, it should be part of the conversation, but not overvalued versus like something that really resonated with someone. Right, right. Um, and as Kelsey hinted at, the conclusion we came to last year is games are eligible for this list if they had a game-changing update. Game-changing update was the wording that we decided on last year for being the most fair thing. <laughs> Just like Gollum, who won't stop jumping in that Google Doc, <laughs> jumping all over like he's Samwise is back. You um, should have made it to the Discord call on time, Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, everybody watching, uh, thank you all for being kind in the comments. Please, for the love of God. Um, and also a reminder, <laughs> uh, you can correct this list. Uh, we are having the community vote as well for their own two tens, uh, and it's happening in the MinMax Discord. So if you support us at any tier on Patreon, not only you're helping to support independent games media by going to patreoncom minmax with two ends, but uh, you can also submit your pick, and then we will read off on a future episode of the MinMax Show podcast what the quote unquote correct uh, scientific community hive mind deems as the two tens. But this is just us, and this is the best that we can do, and we respect you for respecting us. Okay. All right. So, where do we the start? Table set. Good job, Ben. Thank you so Can much, Haley. Have, have we pre-apologized enough for not sharing the same opinions? <laughs> I think as everyone we have. In the universe. I think everyone's going to be really cool with this list, no matter what. <laughs> um, yes, Leo. Please. Can I go first? Yes, you may. So let's go for the Discord line, like we're reading Discord, you know what I mean? So it'll be Leo, and it's different based on the overlay, but Sarah, you'd be next. I assume that's the same for everybody. Then we go back up to Haley, all that fun stuff, right? Uh, for Lob and it's stuff. It's so much better being at the beginning, because I think last year Jacob was first, and yeah. we just let Jacob's game sit at number one for like a whole day. 
Yep. Oh, I told him it was like Vampire Survivors, right? I remember that. <laughs> it was good. Weird. Uh, okay, yeah, Leo wants to go to first. Hit number one here. <sighs> what would you like to I'm throw so out there, scared. Leo? Is the number one game for best of Let me let me check here. My palms are sweaty. <laughs> what I got. Why don't why don't we why don't we go with Hitman Freelancer for this? <laughs> Hitman Let's see how Freelancer. we feel about it at number one. How do okay. we feel about that? It feels good. <laughs> yeah, it feels good up there. So here's the way we were talking about it is um we love and respect Hitman Freelancer, and we all agreed that this is one that's a lock already. No, it just they, we're just seeding the field before we jump in and rearrange all these things, everybody. So don't panic when you see a game that you violently <laughs> disagree with at the number one Jeez. spot. Um, no, we're just seeding the field, and so we're going to sure. eventually get to a it. point of it. we have the slam dunks. We're going through there those. We go. Then we have what we've Fixed called it. in the past. Uh, oh God, Kyle. No, we, we need the numbers, baby. Then we get to the phase where it's the bubblers where it's games that they could conceivably get on the 210s, but it would take some fighting. So when we get to that phase, then we can start describing what these games are a little bit, you know? Um, and then beyond that, it's kind of the honorable mention territory where we're we're championing a game and just it's fun to see it on the list. Um, so I have I have a question. I feel like the, the issue with doing it this way to begin with yeah. is that everyone's going to want to put their games that are not obvious slam dunks first so that That's they fine. aren't considered a oh. bubbler. It's on us. I did not think to do that. It is on I us if we don't. I do that. I yeah. feel like that's silly. But yeah. if, you, if you want to, I guess it's fair. But We need to that's... poke every Jenga block, Kelsey. So if some squeeze by in this early round by people being dashed like that. Please stop saying poke. Please stop. Please stop poking my games, Ben. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, just start lobbing. We don't want to call on people, so let's just go down the row. Sarah, you want to go next then? Yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. Interesting. <laughs> Love it. Heard of it? Yeah. Uh, Have you heard of this game? No, Haley, do you want to put Baldur's Gate 3 again on there? or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, please. All right. Well, is that an option? No, Haley, yeah, go for it. What do you want to put Wait. on that list? Alan Wake 2. Love it. All right. Let's just keep rolling. Keep well, I, I, my is order you? is different. Right. I don't know what the order is. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're I'm next. not. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> I had it covered up. So All right. So now I know going. I'm after Haley. Um, I will put the Legend of Zelda, you guys. Tears of the Kingdom. Heard of it? Heard of it? <laughs> I much? To say that for every single game. <laughs> it so feels awesome. better, yeah. A little game. Called Go Resident back. Evil 4 Remake. Oh. Plus, oh. separate ways. Oh, your packaging. Okay, I mean. A package I, deal. That's implied. Can we just. Uh, Does it not make it without separate ways, just to clarify? Like, without separate ways. I just ways think it's a trash. stronger <laughs> contender with it. I think that's interesting. I think that's interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm going Dead Space Remake plus the pre order bonus. I don't okay. know what you got with it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Let's right. just start adding stuff. Throw a statue Smart. in there. I don't care. Mm. The limited run collector's edition that gives you the helmet. <laughs> yeah, Tears of the Kingdom and twenty dollars in everybody's pocket um, was going to be actually what I meant to say on here. <laughs> You're really doing Dead Space remake, huh, Janet? I love yeah. it. I love it. That's the order I got. Cool. Everyone took the right. other things I had. Uh, I'm putting Dave the Diver. Wow, mm. that feels like a dunk amongst this crew for sure. A dunk mm. amongst men. Hi-Fi Rush. Big old dunk. This is the first time I've typed the name of the game and not accidentally wrote fish in there, so I'm proud of myself. <laughs> That's gotta count for something, you know. That's uh, something. Uh, a sea of stars. A whole sea of them. Love it. Now, did you mean Plus Starfield? Girl. Okay, Carl. Carl's in there. I definitely don't mean Starfield. Okay. <laughs> Can you put that in parentheses, actually? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm doing it right now. Listen to me. I want to use my space to make sure Starfield's not on the list, actually. I'll Interesting. Just my... Interesting. <laughs> uh, what do we think about Chia amongst this group? Does that feel like a dunk or a bubbler? I think, hey, if you want to put it on now, put it on now. It's yeah. certainly a dunk for me. Okay. I didn't. I personally did my list of, I did a little bit over 10, and I'm just going straight down. Love like, it. if someone I think that's, said I think what that's was great. there, I just go to the next one. Yep, I think that's the way to go for the slam dunk territory before we should really start unpacking all these. That's, uh, yeah. Sarah. Who's, who's Sarah. next? Sarah. Sarah. What if Sarah. we don't feel like we have any more slam dunks? It just, I don't either. I feel like I don't think these are my list is weird. Like, how do you I'm kids sorry. feel about <laughs> House Flipper 2? Sure. Yeah. Live your life. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't need to be slam dunk. It's just for the collective group. You know, we're just trying to work through it here. We'll doesn't talk about all these games. Doesn't need to be a slam games. dunk. <laughs> that was the, the whole header. point. <laughs> well, I know that's the header, but you know, I'd rather just get games on the board at this point rather than uh, 
We'll talk about all these things. That's the point. Sure. Marvel Spider-Man 2. Mm, okay. All right. Um, oh, this is me. Um, <clears throat> the making of Karataka. Nice. Get it in that top 20 before... Uh... So it has to be pushed out. Shh, Kelsey, don't, don't reveal our plans. Don't reveal our plans. <laughs> uh, picture this. Uh, a little boy named Pinocchio is dribbling a basketball up and dunking lies of P. Yeah. The, is that Timothy Chalamet? <laughs> NBA yeah, All-Star? From the Game Awards? Yeah. Lies of Jacob, Pippen. you literally introduced yourself as Armored Core 6. Yeah, I find that weird, too. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have a better time with lies of P. Okay. And wow. on my personal list. Okay. okay. Love it. All right, I'm going Chance of Sonar. Whoa. Wow. Uh, two N's, they ripped us off. Two A's? Uh, two X's, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, Kyle's <laughs> right, I think. Okay. I actually don't have it spelled out correctly in my notebook. It's just it's Chance of Sonar. Yeah, I, I wrote in the A's. A's. Okay, yeah. that works, that works, that works. Uh, it's spelled uh, P-I-K-M-I-N. No, that's that's Space. my number eight, Kyle. <laughs> oh, interesting. Is that <laughs> your pick, Kyle? Don't spoil my list. Uh, I'm not next, but yeah. yeah. No, that's you're you're out of order. You're out of order, sir. <laughs> this you whole uh, thing is out of order. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say my my boy Mario. My boy mm. Mario. Okay, Super Mario Brothers Wonders on the list, everybody. I'm going Octopath Traveler two. Octopath Traveler 2. Uh-huh. We're at number, um, well, 18. Or Kyle, did you type it in earlier? Oh, who's up next? No, I don't know who did that. I thought you did that. I, I did not do I that. Touch anything. I well, it's, that. you can leave Pikmin 4 there. That's fine. Are you? Were you up next? Yeah, okay, I, I was next. I can't there. see who's next, technically. Okay, so Pikmin 4, number 18. Uh, I'm going to start describing these now. Uh, yeah. Shadow Gambit, the Cursed Crew. Sure. <laughs> it's a... It's a stealth, immersive sim top-down stealth game with real-time controls where you're controlling three characters simultaneously and, and coming up with these complicated plans where these three people need to do this, these three things at the exact same time without a second off or else, you know, they'll get spotted. It'll blow your whole plan. It's really intricate management that controls unbelievably well for the complicated stuff you're pulling off. And pir okay. it's pirates. It is certainly pirates, yeah. All right, so we're in a bubbler territory. We're, let's just, we're, we're drowning in the bubbles. Uh, Sarah, if you want to lob one in there as well. Uh, city Skylines 2. That's a perfect thing. And it's Cities colon Skylines 2? Skylines, yeah, 2. Okay. Um, what, what, uh, give, us the, give us the sentence. Give us the bubble pitch. You, you build a city. City builder. Immersive city builder sim. And it doesn't work warmer, very well. Warmer, I the tags on Steam. <laughs> it worked fine for me. Okay, good. <laughs> Love it. Haley, don't reveal the strategy, okay? <laughs> I'm like, what can I say about this that hasn't already been, already been said by the Steam description of this game? <laughs> Single player. <laughs> um, my bubbler is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Whoa! Ooh. I what? adored this game, and I appreciate that. It, maybe it missed a lot of people's uh, eyeballs this year, but it was very fun. I had so much fun with playing with my partner and his brother with this game. It's fun that it's a 3v3 kind of concept. I feel like a lot of multiplayer games don't focus on groups of three unless it's like trios and Fortnite or something. So that was really cool. And it just really was such a new take on on the Dead by Daylight format. Like so many other games kind of mimic that and just think, look at our flashy IP, this is enough and th think they can get away with it. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre like took some really bold choices and it pays off. And it's still really fun to this day. And they're, they're adding new IP now, like IP they've made in the Texas Chainsaw <laughs> lore. Like they're making up characters and what stuff. What if there's a Louisiana Chainsaw guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or some it's like some distant cousin. They're like, now they're in here. <laughs> they're like shoving them in. And it's and it's it feels balanced mostly. Sometimes you'll get some survivors who know how to escape in 30 seconds and that's kind of no fun. But there's enough people playing the game still that you get you usually get the same level of knowledge of the maps and stuff against you. And then if you're working together, if you have a team of three, that, that's the sweet spot for that game. It's so fun to be like, I'm in the house, they're in the field, Jason, Jason. And you're just like, ah, I'm going outside. And, oh, it's just, it's some of the most fun I had this year for sure. I love that. I love that. I did not factor that in, but it's great. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to put, I'm going to copy and paste it so I can get the spelling just incredibly correct. Uh, 
theater rhythm final bar line at this point. Mm-hmm. This you can copy and paste that truth. and it looks wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the Final Fantasy uh, music rhythm game that, again, I, I played the previous entries and it's like, well, we all like Final Fantasy music. How fun can it be? But something about this game just had the right time in my life, like playing this on Switch and playing through all of those songs. Uh, it is a ridiculous amount of music that they packed into this thing where it's like, okay, they have the greatest hits from all these uh, Final Fantasy games that let you appreciate the soundtrack to games like Final Fantasy XIV, Sarah, I finally understand what you're raving about for all that time. Pretty simple rhythm gameplay, but engaging enough, you're swapping out different Final Fantasy characters and summons and upgrading them as you go along your little journey. Um, And then the DLC is just ridiculous, where it's like, the greatest Final Fantasy songs, just a ridiculous amount of those, but then, hey, we're going to throw in soundtracks to Chrono Cross and Xenogears, and they added Final Fantasy XVI's music, which I'd argue is the best soundtrack of the year. Um, And so the game just kept getting better throughout the entire year, and it's one of those games that, like, it's not a juggernaut of game design, but in terms of games that made me just absolutely over the moon delighted every time I played the rhythm final bar line freaking rules and this is officially on the list higher than final fantasy 16 hey (laughs) and it will stay that way somebody can throw (laughs) another game on there if they want to yeah where are we at now armored core 6 yes the coolest robot game ever made Mm. Surprise, this is a Sorry, bubbler. Chibi Robo. <laughs> no! <laughs> you had to it's have been there. You know? uh, I'm going uh, Venba. Great pick, great pick. Should, do I have to explain what it is? I think a one sentence thing, yeah, it would be nice. Okay. Well, the. Okay, yeah. Because um, I was like, oh, I guess Jacobs was the best robot game. Um, it's a really good cooking story game that I think it's sort of secret sauce is the way it goes about telling its story and leaving gaps for the player to fill it in my quick pitch for this game it's it's this year's unpacking where Mm. i think if you haven't Mm. played it you're like i don't know i'm just doing x is it really that special but if you have played it and experienced it i think it really shows the way it lets narrative shine in inventive ways that i personally normally have not experienced uh on this level so that's venba hell yeah uh mine's gonna be shadows of doubt Ooh. Um, oh, yeah. a, a kind of mystery detective game where they put you in in a city block. One like, well, maybe there are a couple city blocks, but they're all procedurally generated. So every building it, you can go into and has, you know, if it's an apartment building, there's apartments on every floor, and every apartment has stuff in it. Every every person in it is has been procedurally generated. They have their own, you know, routine that they go through, and you're trying to solve procedurally generated murders. But it's a game where most detective games, you know, they will they have a scripted thing that they want you to find. And here it's just all open. You have to figure it out yourself. And I had one of one of my favorite, most magical moments of gaming this year was I went through this entire apartment. I was trying to piece together all the clues. I, I had them all up on the deduction board and like I was cross cross referencing phone numbers because everyone has a phone number that actually works if you call it whatnot. I went through all of it and then I realized I had misread a note and I was in the wrong apartment. <laughs> I had broken into the wrong person's apartment and I walked out and I went straight to the, to his neighbor and I, I had fabricated this entire like plan of like who was the murderer, but it was all based on me absentmindedly being the worst detective in the world. And that was, <laughs> it's just amazing. That would never happen in another game. Um, yeah, that's a great yeah. pick. Love it. All right, I'm going to say the Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Future Redeemed DLC, which I think counts because it is, it, it's a big enough um, story conclusion to wrap up all three of the Xenoblade Chronicles series games in one, like, just absolutely mind-blowing ending. Um, you get characters returning that don't it's not in like a hokey like the whole gang's back in town you know kind of deal like (laughs) everyone makes sense for being there and there's a ton of people missing and you learn about you know why they're missing and um or i guess more accurately why these people can all exist together at the same time at all um and i look you do have to play all three Xenoblade Chronicles games to get the payoff, but it is genuinely the biggest story payoff I have ever experienced in any piece of media ever. Wow. Whoa, whoa. All right, um, I guess we'll just move up to number three right now, which whoa. is kind of the Xenoblade. Oh. So, oh. Okay, 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 okay. Um, so yeah. This is like Endgame if it was like 
quite the investment. Which I guess Endgame kind of is. It is, it is, yeah. it is quite the investment. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It is a stuff, minimum, probably, like with all the DLCs and everything, it's probably altogether a 300 hour investment on wow. on the like average to low end. <laughs> So. And the payoff Are on that. Are we lucky front. to have Kelsey to do that for us so we know it's good enough? Oh, yeah, it was all That's why I have it. That's, why, that's why a lot of stuff with Kelsey <laughs> stuff, I'm like, I just have to assume that it's good because I'm not going to do the work. So I'm like, I get you. You won because you spent the time. Yeah. Uh, climbing Mount Everest is my 27. And I guess you'd have to have been there to kind of disprove it. So <laughs> uh, who's next? It's like beating Elden Ring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that'd be me. I uh, A lot of folks. Uh, have been talking about Lies of P, which is quite high in this list. I think deservedly so. Lies of P is a very good game, but I think my personal favorite Souls-inspired game this year uh, is was Wo Long Fall and Dynasty. Mm. Uh, just mm. incredibly satisfying counter mechanics uh, inspired by Sekiro. I mean, it's the Souls-like game that I beat this year, um, which okay. says a lot. I mean, if that's if that's it takes a lot to pull me through a full version of one of those games, especially if. If it's not developed by From, and uh, Liza P hasn't done that quite yet, but Wo Long did. I had a great time with Wo Long. Uh, I'd like to suggest Friends versus Friends for the Bubblers. Oh, remind us, Leo. Remind us. This is a one v one or two v two first person shooter card game hybrid. So you're playing cards to make your opponent's head bigger, or make your gun do more damage, or a card is just a bomb, or you have a card that makes all the rest of the cards you use spawn a bomb from you. So you have a build around playing 100 cards, and every time you play one, you're throwing a bomb out in front of you. Crazy combinations, and there was a moment in it that I wanted to bring up for a moment of the year that I'll just talk about now. There's a card uh, that is a... Well, should I wait to talk about it? Maybe. Yeah, I think just to remind us. Yeah, we can, we can get back into it. Hype. Hype. <laughs> uh, I would like to throw out the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Yeah. The tarot Ooh. card... D- like deck building game where you play as a witch named Fortuna who can do tarot card readings and she's been banished to the edge of the universe for foretelling her coven's uh, demise. I love it. It's a little, I, little visual oh, novel, a little choose your own adventure style game. I can't wait to dive into that more because I don't think that's one we talked about on the podcast and so I definitely want to hear more mm-hmm. about it for sure. If you would, it's one of those words that needs to get used more. Coven is yeah. such a good word. Yeah. I hear the word coven and I'm like, oh, they're they're tight. They, they have a whole thing going on that coven. <laughs> Should we change the cohorts to covens? <gasps> Where, coven. Does that make sense as a singular <laughs> thing? Um, Computer loving coven. <laughs> <laughs> so Sarah, if, you, if you were to give that game an ESRB rating, what would you give it? Um, 18 plus. Yeah. Because okay. they, they, yeah. there's no sex, but they talk about sex. It's a very sex positive game. Okay. Hey. I would want to be in a sex positive coven. So yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any other kind. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Haley, do you have one to throw on there? Otherwise, you're just in a gang. I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say Dredge. Ooh. Um, Ooh. Horror fishing game. I think, like, even just hearing those two words together, you're like, huh? What could that possibly look like? But it ha- I, th- I found it had a very fun little gameplay loop. And the story was interesting enough that I, I finished it and I saw it all the way through to the end. And it was it, I, I was traveling when this game came out and it was a perfect airport game. It's just like sitting around and fishing and getting a little bit scared and has a really unique mechanic that's fun. That's like the longer you stay out, the more weird stuff happens out on the sea because yeah. you're going crazy out on the sea. And it's not just one or two things. Like they have a lot of different animations and unique things that can happen if you stay out too long to the point that when I beat it, I just went out to sea just like for a really long time because I just wanted to go crazy and see all the unique stuff they put into that game <laughs> with my insanity <laughs> meter filled up. Cool. Um, it was very fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Love it. Uh, this seems like a great time for a game called Final Fantasy 16, everybody. <laughs> I'd say the biggest spectacle game of the year, but there should be a place for just the over-the-top, huge, big-budget RPG, <laughs> I guess, which is the weird part on that, because it's certainly slipping further away from that genre, but it's still a, a hell of a thing to experience this year. Uh I want to put on the biggest spectacle in terms of number of people, humanity. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the puzzle game in which, uh, kind of like Lemmings, you control just like an endless stream of people walking around, giving them instructions. Uh, kind of absurdist, almost a la Katamari in like its, its like writing style and view on uh what humanity means and it's just like it's the most visually compelling puzzle game i've played probably yeah 
Cool. I have another puzzle game. It's Cocoon. Perfect. Um, it is a... Oh, gosh. What are you even doing here? You're like a little bug guy. You're traveling around. <laughs> you are carrying different orbs that contain worlds. So the puzzle solving involves going in and out of these orbs, but they sort of confine you to one space per puzzle, essentially. So it's very easy to stay on track. The solutions are fairly intuitive. I think they stack really nicely. It's a really atmospheric, moody, weirdly organic meets mechanical type of game. Um, I think it's just very masterfully designed. Um, I think the biggest ding against it is just that the puzzles never get that hard. So some people are like, ah, I mean, it's not like, you know, it doesn't flex your muscles in that way. But I think there's a lot of space for different kinds of puzzle games. And to me, Cocoon is a game where you can appreciate the design of it and the experience of it and the execution of the solutions more so than, sure, you may not be beating your head against the wall, but I don't necessarily think that that is the pinnacle of puzzle games is difficulty. So, yeah, the design's great. Cocoon. Uh, I'm going to nominate a game called Roots of Pacha. Wow. Um, Ooh, we're getting freaky, y'all. Yeah, full disclosure, I I just started playing it like the past couple days. So it's you put one Coral of those Island down for Roots of Pacha? Well, here's the thing, Sarah. I started I started Coral Island. We'll, pro- we'll probably get to Coral Island mm-hmm. at some point. Um, the PS5 version, the sound effects weren't working on it mm, for like yeah. the first three three or four weeks. If they fi- it finally started working, and so I had gotten enough experience in it that I do enjoy it. But like right now, like I like I said, I'm in the middle of playing it, so I'm like really in that high zone of um, of what makes it so good. It, it's it's very recent, obviously. Um, but so like. The cool things about, uh, you know, obviously it's a farming sim. We have a lot of those. Um, this one, you're, you're all cave people. Um, you've all, it's like the only farming farming game I've played that has a different premise from all the other ones because you've all kind of moved out. You've gone on this um, journey that you had to go on. So you're in a new area. Everybody's kind of working to build it up together at the same time. You're all pooling all of your resources they have a they have like this idea mechanism which is how you get new new things to create like your your fellow tribesmen have to come up with the ideas to create you know like a well or a smoker or those those kind of things like all of the mini games have been really interesting you you can play a flute and to befriend animals and it has this really cute um like rhythm timing music game to it um it's just it's very charming which is what i want from a cozy farming sim kind of game um so yeah yeah there you go cool. all right i'm gonna just keep nominating rpgs because otherwise no one else will <laughs> 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 uh star ocean second story r um which is a remake of um the second star ocean which is an older game but um on the ps1 but they've really like they've really done a lot to modernize it and to make it extremely i mean i it was a maybe 35 hour game, which is hopefully appealing for fans of old school RPGs who maybe don't want to sit through the entirety of an old school mm-hmm. RPG or have to do a lot of the grinding and stuff. Um, it's it's like very systems heavy if you want it to be, but otherwise you can kind of just ignore it, which I which I appreciate. It's it's yeah. one of those that does a really good job of like here's a lot of stuff if you want to like min max huh? your your team and get really <laughs> and get really uh like granular with it but you can also just you can breeze through it pretty quickly without that too um great characters fun combat just a very solid rpg that still holds up thank god you put that on the list and i didn't have to kelsey it's a weight off my shoulders thank you uh and kyle i really appreciate the two x's thing let's <laughs> It continues to be funny to me. Yeah. It's funny. It is like even people on Twitter are like, I love Min Max. It's like these people with two X's like, well, just look at the word before you love it is the least we could do. Know your wife's name before you love her, as my grandpappy <laughs> once told me. Uh, sorry, where were we? Uh, I'm going to take everything Kelsey just said, but yeah. I'm going to swap the word Star Ocean for Super Mario RPG. Second story R? <laughs> oh, yeah, you dropped that part. <laughs> Uh, but truly, I mean, a lot of the same points. Classic yeah. remade RPG, fantastic, breezy, short, charming characters, fun. I, I really like 
I kind of went into that game sort of thinking it's like, I wonder if this will sour my fond memories of Super Mario RPG. And it didn't at all. I, I really just had a great time playing the game. And it was one of those that I like, I I nearly 100% of that game. Like I continued playing it long after I, you know, uh, completed my required uh, playing it because I was reviewing it. But uh, just really love that game. That's sweet. Love to see it on there. I'm going to say the finals, which yeah, came out really recently. Dog. I put 20 hours into the beta and 20 hours into the game since it launched. Whoa. And I'm currently living my life between finals matches. I'm so Whoa. hooked on it. It's 3v3v3, three three three, potentially four teams of three or more, depending on the mode you're playing. And it's almost an extraction shooter. You're kind of bringing a payload to a point and defending it, extracting it, whatever. The big hooks are, it's got complete destruction. You can bring whole buildings down and you're parkouring around the debris. I have no idea how it works so well. And uh, besides that, it's just really, really snappy, feels good. It's got kind of that Call of Duty movement, satisfying dopamine, but with like genuinely interesting gadgets and creative decision making on the fly. It's it's like kind of my siege replacement, to be honest. Ooh, it's yeah. filling that hole for the first time anything has. Do you think the finals is kind of like um, having a big impact on campuses? Kind of like when they name a bar the office. So it's like, I'm going to the office to get drunk. You think it's like, I'm working on the finals, but these college kids, they're just playing this freaking shooter all day yeah studying for my finals on the subreddit <laughs> sarah i wasn't finished <laughs> I'm, just <gonna> finish. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say like the late hit lethal company i've been really really enjoying the multiplayer co-op horror game where yeah. you and three of your closest friends go from horror planet to horror planet to gather scrap for the company and if you have to meet you have to meet a quota of all about like the scrap you get so each scrap is worth different amounts of like a value and then at the end if when you go to turn in your scrap if you don't meet it you just get jettisoned into space to die and then you just start over from the beginning but there's just something so addicting about the gameplay loop the proximity chat the walkie talkies like all the goofy stuff they put in um and the monsters are truly terrifying nothing like watching your friend get their head chopped off in front of your eyes in the dark <laughs> truly nothing like a certain je ne sais quoi. truly nothing like it that's beautiful that's beautiful Fair game Thank you for playing that for the team, Sarah. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, yeah, I really, I <laughs> took one for the team when I got addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> My next one would be Goodbye Volcano High. Oh, yeah. I really like this game. So this was like, it's like a visual novel. It has some gameplay in it, like um, rhythm-based songs and stuff. But mostly it's just kind of picking your options and going through high school. It's from the perspective of Fang who is a young dinosaur. Everybody's dinosaurs. And one of my favorite things that they do with this game is they have this like overarching metaphor where like leaving high school is the end of the world because in this world, like a comet's coming to finish off the dinosaurs. And like, that's very similar to the kind of feelings that high schoolers feel when maybe they don't have a bunch of plans after high school, but all their friends do. And they're just kind of like, oh God, what do I do? I'm stuck. I'm here forever. And like comparing that to that, comet that's slowly approaching about to destroy everybody and it has some really nice story beats and i think they do some really good story stuff and and also it's just really visually striking i really like the art i thought it looks way better than they needed it to look like it's very crisp very pretty looking and i still think about it a lot yeah so i had a lot of fun with it uh i'm gonna put uh, a space for the unbound uh on this list this is the game that came out in january it is the adventure game uh, that takes place in Indonesia in the 90s, but incredible pixel art. And as the story unfolds, it gets bigger and more fantastical and more surreal. Um, and it's it's an adventure game, but even as somebody who loves that genre, it's, it's a fun twist of like, it's an adventure game, but it's just really fun. They pack a lot of like variety and little mini games in there and it really, really charms you. Uh, I want to put on Jusant. Yes. The uh, the climbing game that I I said in my own top ten uh, video. I feel like this is the best uh, journey like game since Journey. Yeah. Essentially, that it, that it feels mm -hmm. like we've had a bunch that have been trying to do similar kind of beauty of the natural world, very pretty music, very striking art style, and I haven't really felt the like like as much of an original voice from any of those as I did from Jusant. It's kind of, it's like, you know, it's like Journey's pretty, 
Plus also the uh, climbing style a la Death Stranding where you really have to think about like where every individual limb goes. That that you're not doing the simple auto climbing that uh, something like Uncharted has kind of popularized. Yeah. But you still get really fast with it. Like at by yes. the time you get your hands around the controls, it's as fast or faster as any of those climbing systems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how are we all feeling? Are we in kind of honorable mention territory? For audio listeners, we're at technically number 41 on this list. Um, it's not saying they can't climb their way onto the two tens, but are we kind of in that window where it's we want to give a tip of the cap, but not really considered a bubbler? I mean, my, mine certainly round. are. One more round? One more all round? All right, sure. I wanted to check the temperature on Dead Island 2. <laughs> you can, if you the, love it, the run with it. The temperature is, I think it's you know, not good. Uh, <laughs> great podcast temperature. <laughs> Yeah, and it'd be a good podcast if we t- talked about it for the next two hours. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's like a beautiful LA day, but if it's like seventy three, you know, and you, you can still sit outside with your hands behind your head and enjoy it, but it's not going to be a beautiful scorcher. Yeah, I mean, unless you want to push for it, Leo. I mean, is it in your top ten, Leo? Yeah, but I mean, there's eight other. So let's just keep going. Yeah, fight right. but that can be an honorable mention. Dead Island two. Really fun, really pretty, really cool to explore. Totally, yeah. totally awesome next gen game. Like, I, shockingly competent in almost every way for that, for, for what I expected from that game being in development for a decade. Yeah. And some of my favorite haptic trigger, uh, you know, technology usage as far as using the heavy weapons in that game, really feeling chunky and slow. Yeah, uh, so mm-hmm. bubblers, stuff that's on people's personal top ten, or they think they want yeah. to fight for it for that. What, what are we missing here? Jacob Haley, did you want to put Slay the Princess in bubblers? Because I started playing mm. it, and I was really enjoying it. I don't know. I think you were the only two people playing it besides me. It's it's an honorable mention for okay. me. I could imagine if everyone played it, then we might be talking about it in two tens. But like, I think I think it's really neat, but I don't need to fight for it. Um. I do want to fight for it, but not in my top ten. Yeah, I mean, we can still we can still talk about it now, though. In yeah. the honorable mentions, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't finish it, but from my early perspective of the game, you are essentially going through a storybook where the goal is to slay the princess. But it gets a little it gets a little tricksy here, depending on if you choose to slay the princess, choose to not slay the princess, or choose to just leave. You go through these like different weird story twists and turns, and it gets a little uh like meta narrative, and it is how I would describe it. It gets a lot um, meta narrative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's just one of those like really fun quick story games. Cool. It's the kind of thing I picked up to just like see what it is for a second, and then I played the whole thing and beat it, and was like googling things about it, and was on the subreddit, and it has like. <laughs> A lot of different endings there. Yeah. It has like a crazy amount of endings to it. You yeah. can you can get kind of like the true ending, like roll credits and still have not seen many, many, many of the game's potential endings. We talked about this. I feel like Haley and I talked about this when we were talking about character of the year because we had both narrator and the princess on it. Yeah. But like it's this is going to be a cult classic. Like mm-hmm. people, I, I think there are going to be a lot of YouTube videos where people are like, you got to check out Slay the Princess. That's great. That's great. Uh, anybody want to add one for the bubbler category, if that means anything? I I want to put on... It's hard because I almost can't decide which one, but uh, put Like a Dragon Guide and the Man Who Erased His Name. Mm. Oh, okay. Or Like a Dragon Ishin or both. I was thinking both on there. Ishin. I was going to honorable mention it. Ishin. It's, hey, everybody... The distinctions are very <laughs> minimal. We can just toss it on out and celebrate it now. I, we, it's still at I number 43, playing, by the way. I just started playing The Man Who Erased His Name based based off of our uh, MinMax Awards discussions and how good the ending supposedly is, which I didn't listen to, but it it made it very high on that <laughs> list. So yeah. I'm like, I'm only like five hours in, but, it, you know, it's... It is a good like a dragon game so far. And you're like you're like a third of the way through, Kelsey. That game is really? not very long. Yeah, it's oh a gosh, it's a 13 cool. hour game. Oh, um, awesome. We did the um we did the deepest dive on like a dragon uh mm-hmm. earlier this year, which was one of my uh, one of my favorite mi- pieces of Minmax content. Um I think that game the end kind of sours it because it has mm-hmm. a kind of a distasteful ending, but like the 
the way that that game is kind of remastered from the original PS3 release, it has some of the like best choreographed cutscenes I've ever seen. Like the yeah. you know to the extent that I like thought I was watching pre-rendered scenes and then I realized that the characters were using the costumes that I was wearing in the game. You know, but like like the kind of the level of storytelling and like the coolness of moves that you're able to do as a samurai who has a revolver in that game are uh, are really really neat. And then Gaiden has my favorite moment of the year. So, and the rest <laughs> of Gaiden's fun to... too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's weird to just keep looking at you, Jacob, to be like, all right, you gotta help guide us for which game you think deserves a spot more on the two tens. But I mean, uh, I listen just as somebody who listened to Janet, <laughs> you're the master of that joke. But as somebody who just like listened to the deepest dive on Like a Dragon Eshin, like you all seem to really be enjoying it a lot. And so I'm kind of surprised that. It's kind of floundered in this phase. I think a lot of the enjoyment came from the history. Like, Tokugawa era Japan is a very interesting era of Japanese history. You know, you have, like, the West coming in for the first time ever. You know, knock, knock, open the door kind of situation. <laughs> a lot of yeah. knock, knock, uh, you don't be closed anymore. Um, <laughs> so I think that's what made it really special to me. Yeah. I think where it fell short for me was just, like, general gameplay-wise. It didn't, it got a little repetitive. But, yeah, it was just an incredible look at that time period. An absolute Yakuza game. Nailed the setting. So, yeah, I mean, definitely. And it did have we there were some character moments in that game that we loved so much. There's there's a thing where like a major character uh, like believes that he's experienced a family death and like you just go you just get drunk as him and you keep kind of running into people, including people who are supposedly enemies. But it's just like, look, man, we're just going on a bender. And then you like do a bunch of stuff with them and you inadvertently broker a peace treaty like mm -hmm. drunkenly. <laughs> and it's, uh, I think a problem with those games is that they're actually just so big and have so much stuff in them that like they don't really stick in your mind as like a full game as much uh, because that you do like 40 different things in a Yakuza game. Yeah, like yeah. I forgot about chicken racing completely. Like there was like bet betting on chicken races and like having your own homestead with Haruka. Like the naked bathhouse fight where you fight yeah. naked in the bathhouse. Like right. bunch of great moments. Yeah, I totally enjoyed that game and I but I'd be happy to have it on honorable mentions. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have two that if this is a funny situation. I don't know if I talked about them last year because they came out in December. Okay. Like the middle of December. Like, do you have a way of having like the, I don't know if you have the old doc. I, I can find it. The, yeah. If, well, while you look for it, I'll just go to my next one and I'll swing back to those. Well, two. now you got to um, just reveal it. Just what is it right now? Oh, a potion craft and little gator game or like two that came uh, out. In little gator game. We didn't talk about potion craft. We might have. We talked That's about potion thing. permit okay. last year. Oh, <laughs> They are different games. <laughs> okay, well then we did not talk about Potion Craft or Gator Game. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just do Potion Craft and I'll come back to the others or maybe anyone else that is into the little Gator Game can speak on it. Um, potion Craft is an alchemy game. It's an alchemy simulator where you are making potions and you have a shop. Um, the thing that makes it interesting is the way you go about creating your library of potions or your recipe book, which... In the foreground, you have where you make your potions, you know, you click on it, it's a point and click game. You know, you pick, click on ingredients, you, you know, muddle them up, you put them in the cauldron. But in the background of that, you see um, uh, a bottle in the middle of a map. And as you stir your mixture, you'll move on the map based on the kind of ingredients you use. So like one ingredient might take you south with like a slight curve, one might take you east, but it's in a zigzag formation. And you're using that to reach new status effects, things like you know, um, poison or um, lustfulness is like one of them, you know, just different things, explosives. And you can kind of co combine effects when you make a potion and sort of part of the additional layer of gameplay is trying to come up with the most efficient ways to craft something like, oh, well, maybe it's better to craft with these ingredients because they're cheaper, but this one can get me there faster. And you're kind of continuously exploring the map it is probably the most intriguing it's ever been to uncover map fog because i feel like Ooh. typically in a game when you're uncovering map fog you're just walking through the area and that's satisfying in its own way but here it's like you really have to work for that and i think outside of um strange horticulture is the closest comparison in terms of exploring while in a stationary setting it is so intriguingly explorative 
while also having like these other systems of, you know, haggling with customers and then your shop rating, like how kind of good or evil your shop is based on the people you service, but then also the stars based on if you haggle too much or stars go down. Like there's a lot of layers to it. Um, I think at a certain point in a way it does get inherently repetitive, but I personally always get a kick out of that gameplay flow of constantly trying to unlock more effects and do my task to hit the next chapter. And it's it's one of the most satisfying grinds I've experienced. And I what I really like about it was I think most times with simulator games, if there is difficulty, the difficulty is in speed. Like, you know, think of an overcooked, like, okay, how fast can you do the thing? This is about strategy. Um, it is the probably closest I think the two genres have been married, despite the fact that they're in the same category for game awards, but whatever, right? Like they, you really have to plan out your stuff. And I think that's interesting because it could have easily just been, I don't know, I'm making potions. And I think we see a lot of simulators that are just about doing the thing, but this has a layer of mechanical thought that I haven't experienced prior. So I really love that title. Yeah, love it. And then Little Gator Game. Yeah, it's nice to, to not forget about that one. I assume a lot of people play this thing. Um, but lovely. The easy shorthand, right, is like, oh, it's like short hike. Um, yeah. But it's just sweet, no combat, uh, trying to recreate. It's very Zelda, but you're trying to make your sister fall in love with playing outside again as a little gator. Yeah. Essentially, I think the the thing that I really love about it, while it's not like quite as good as a short hike, but few games are like that's like such an incredible piece. Um, I like where the story ends up going. Like I played through it in one sitting back at the end of last year, and I really loved the ways that it could have easily just been about, oh, yeah, like it's fun to play outside. Right. You remember this. It's cool. But <laughs> it sort of reaches this deeper level of the protagonist accepting not just why their sister doesn't isn't as interested, but also realizing like everything that came before with like all of that their big sister did to entertain them and take care of them and the role of like that older, younger sibling dynamic and how that changes experiences for each person. I thought that was very affecting. Yeah. Um, and it, it also has a, a little bit of an additional layer commentary on, I think, game development and the process of making games. The idea of this older sister who started in, with IRL game design and now is in college who doesn't have time to play with their younger sister who inspired them about making games. It's like, I'm too busy making the games to play the game that got me into games. You know, it's that classic thing. And I think it's also like a nice commentary on work versus family, where there's this really poignant moment where the older sister is like, oh yeah, I have to focus on what's important and kind of realize it's like, damn, like what am I doing here? You know, in a way. So I think it, it's it's got a depth there that I wasn't really expecting from the narrative. Yeah, a little gator game. It's up there. Sweet. Um, well, let's go ahead and do Coral Island now. I don't know how... Jeff, I am stunned. How... I'm waiting for a haymaker from you, and it hasn't happened yet. Coral <laughs> Island. All oh, right. yeah, that's... Yeah, we're we're sitting on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Coral Island, um, you know, another farming sim from this year, uh, based on kind of Southeast Asian culture, which is kind of like the biggest draw that that makes this one different. There's a lot of... A lot that goes into like a diving mechanic um, that you're kind of cleaning up the underwater uh, area around this island. They do a good job setting up the premise of that there's this big, you know, corporate oil company coming in that's kind of threatening the vitality of the island. And from there, it's it, you know, follows kind of the Joja Mart um, uh, kind of like setup for for one of these farming games. Um Everybody's super hot on that island. It's oh, wow. it's Jeff, crazy. Um, this is a new and they're all year. single. Uh, all yes. single. Interesting. It's, it's the it's the dream island if you're into that aspect. Um, <laughs> otherwise, once hey once once they got the sound effects to actually work on the console version, um, I've been enjoying it. Sweet. So, yeah. Love it. Yep. Coral Island. All right. All right, I'm going to lob on a paranormal site, Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, which is yeah. a horror visual novel slash kind of adventure game um, about resurrecting dead people and curses. And I'll leave it at that because it's you definitely want to play it to like actually learn what's going on in the game. But um, it's a fun it's got some like kind of jump scary stuff, but it, I would say it's more unsettling horror than it is like in your face jump scare i don't do very well with in your face jump scare so love it love it yeah i remember you're really ecstatic about that one when you brought it up on the podcast that's that's cool to cool to bring up 
Um, uh, I'll two two quickies. Uh, oh. WarriorWare, move it. Uh, everything I wanted from WarriorWare with motion controls. Uh, but it is another WarriorWare game. You know, it, yeah. it, it's it's not innovative in that regard. But it, as in terms of getting you to stand up and make a, a, a an idiot of yourself, nailed it. Yeah, uh, not my favorite game. Wario, but. Still unquestionably one of the funniest games you can play on planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, like what, what I wanted from us WarioWare on Switch. Yeah. Like that, yes, this is it. Yeah. Other than the fact that 20% of the games don't really work. But other than that, it's a really yeah, I had fun a much thing. higher percentage. Like, I, I, I had... I, maybe I just had better luck. I don't know. You have a better hand that the IR sensor, I, I think, has oh, to read. Yeah, Great hands so. on Kyle. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just a, uh, just a uh, mention. I just... A viewfinder. It's like yeah, a it really is weird. It hasn't cool, come up yet. Yeah. Yeah. I like going to say... Really, a really cool mechanic that works well, but the thing that I, I and I don't want to come off as too negative or anything. I, it's a cool game. It's a great game, but like I got this, the I got the same amount of enjoyment out of watching a, like a trailer for it as I did <laughs> playing it. Where I was yeah. like, "Wow, that yeah. thing really works!" And then when I played it, I was like, "Wow, this thing really works!" And then it was, it was, it was good. It was solid. It's a solid. And then the game, game. is like you, that puzzle was so smart. I can't believe you figured out that smart of a puzzle. There's a lot of talking, <laughs> I think, in the game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, and, oh yeah, a lot no. of patting themselves on the back for how good they are at coming up with puzzles. Yeah. But those, so uh, yeah, WarioWare and Viewfinder are solid games that I played this year. That, uh, pro- you know, I, I, those are my just my shout outs. Shout outs, Kyle. Shout outs. Shout outs, ma'am. Thanks for your shout outs. Did anybody else play Mr. Sun's Hatbox? Yes, Leo. I was getting to that territory as well. Um, I think you played a lot more and loved it a lot more than I did, but I do think it's freaking sweet. I love it. I, I beat it on Steam and I've, I've almost beaten it on Switch. It's it's great. It's a side-scrolling game that's a lot like Duck Game in that it's a, a slapstick comedy game. You're constantly slipping on stuff and falling into a guy and it knocks them out. You're shooting somebody in the head. It knocks their hat off. Their hat lands on the ground and a bullet gets fired out of it at somebody else. It's like these weird little rapid fire combinations of things that you can like miss if you're not paying attention. Like what even happened? But it's up to four player co-op, which makes those moments really fun. And you're really a lot of laughs with friends running through that entire game and co-op for sure. Yeah, it's And just... then the between game metagame is XCOM meets Metal Gear Solid 5. You're like managing your little troops with their unique traits and you're brainwashing certain traits out of them or trying to imbue them with other traits. You you can like pick up extra items and sell them in a shop that you have to staff with certain members of your team. Like that whole meta layer is really fun, but it's like the most basic version of all of that. It's like a so dense and rich, but you could beat it in four hours. Like it's a, it's a fun game. Yeah. And it's just, it is, so frenetic like you're looking at your loadout you're building out your base you have this person with funky traits i'm trying to remember some of the traits but just like once you get into the match especially early on i guess the level's a little bit smaller like it can just all happen so fast and it's so fun to have like that XCOM structure but then it just comes down to like 10 seconds of frenetic platforming and then bah, your, your beloved character is dead because it turns out every time they jump they fire a gun and then it ricocheted off something and killed you it's just like it's so zany yeah. and to have that so condensed down it's a really cool feel but yeah I really love or Mr. You, Sunset Fox. you panic when spotted so like yes. you're sneaking up on a guy and they see you and then your character you lose control of them and they start jumping around firing their <laughs> weapon randomly it's all like it it is that silly it doesn't want to matter too much or for you to be like oh man I missed that shot or whatever it's much more about like creating the little moments yeah yeah no good shout out for mr sun's hat box for sure time for another good shout out shout out to fashion dreamer for once again being the only Hell game yeah. brave enough to let me play a dress-up game as an adult <laughs> um fashion dreamer is your classics in sophia you know girls mode but maybe we're bringing it to the switch you enter this weird ai world like internet world where you yeah. just have unlimited <laughs> access to unlimited clothes and other people and you go around and you see other people's um, avatars and you can dress them up in the clothes that you like and then they can get those clothes. You can run a little shop and other people can come and get clothes from you. They can like request outfits from you. Uh, just sort of like a weird like what if we made a fashion game but we just you just play with each other. There's like NPCs but there's not really a story. Right. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. It pretty much is. Yeah like almost like fashion sandbox in a way. It's yeah. like you kind of make your own fun. And I think it's kind of the biggest thing against it. I think if this game had more structure to it, I don't know about you, Sarah, I feel like it easily could have been at least in my like personal top yeah. 20. But mm. I think just the how bare bones it is, is really the ding against it. But if you like fashion, 
Like it is yeah. so much I fun think, because it's that power fantasy of I walk up and I see a sweater I want. That's my sweater now. I don't have to pay for now. it. I don't have to grind for. I don't got to do anything. I can just have it, <laughs> and that's all I want. I see so many things and I want so many things, <laughs> but then it costs money. I gotta like look at my, you know, I got the checking and the savings and most of my in the savings. It's like you know we don't have any of that here. You can just go. And and, I, and Sarah made me cute little outfits, and that was fun. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Right. That's beautiful. Fashion yeah, if dreamer. it was a true girls mode style savvy game, it would definitely be up in bubblers, but it is Ooh. not. Okay. Okay. Haley, you got more stuff? Yeah. Meet your maker. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. I loved this game. I had a really good time with it. Was it just Leo and I that played this? Did anyone else get I started it? it. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I started it. it can- it doesn't have an end. Like it's not a story. It's just like you go in and you play and you rank up and you just get better and better. So it's a how do we describe it? Shooter raider world builder game. <laughs> yeah, puzzle platformer. But every puzzle you do is built by somebody else. It's there's no uh, specific curated content at all. It's just other yeah. people's bases and your base. And when people raid your base, you can watch the replay and free cam around and fast forward and see all the points they died at. Look at the map of like, oh, everybody's getting killed by this trap. I need more like this. But yeah. also getting raided on like your R-A-T-E-D raided on how clever or fun your map is. So you can make it like an adventure. And if people like it, you still get rewards for that, even if it's not a super punishing one cool design like that but i didn't stick with it but i I think it's really cool do we have any sense like did did the oh sorry is the community still okay for meet your maker did everybody fall off this cool idea do we have any idea where we're at i haven't checked it in the last few months but i remember i played a lot right at launch and it hit so different right at launch because no one really had unlocked a lot of stuff yet like you kind of unlock stuff as someone who goes into bases to try to get out and then you can also unlock stuff to build bases so like at the very start it'll just be like spikes on the ground and like a very low level grunt who's like no and it's like easy to kill them but then people who unlock all the stuff it's like these crazy guys who sprint at you as soon as you turn a corner or like bombs that come out around a corner that destroy you on impact like two seconds you have to know in advance where the bombs are and stuff so then i came back a few months later and started playing a bunch more too and it hit so different because it's like the community had matured and like gotten better at building stuff so when you check out like what's the most popular stuff right now it was like way harder than i (laughs) remembered so i wasn't good enough raider like to get back up to there but some of my best moments was like i'm gonna pick a hard one and stick with it i'm not i'm not allowed like Mm. i'm not allowed to bounce off I don't care how frustrated I get. I'm going to beat this. And it would sometimes be like over an hour of one, some dude in like Idaho's level. And I'm just like, I'm going to play this until I beat it. And like dying and dying and dying and dying. And then when you finally do beat it, you're so excited. And it's like, there's no dev that made this for me. This was just someone who also likes this game that crafted this experience for me. And I'd love to think of him watching back and be like, oh my God, some chick in Canada did this for an hour and 15 <laughs> minutes and like watching my vid of like me dying over and over the same places, but learning as you go, it's very rewarding and it's, it's unique and fun. And I don't really feel like a lot of other games this year did that. It was kind of like a solo vibe of that and it, it disappeared pretty quick off the radar which yeah. is too bad but yeah i'd be curious to see how the community is doing now yeah. and even little big planet other games where you create levels i think we all play those games and go i want to create a level and then we do and it's like too hard and we don't really do it maybe we make one or two and super mario maker or whatever this game it's really approachable to make your own base and it's really mm-hmm. rewarding like every pretty much everybody does and that's a, a big win from the design department i think because yeah. you yeah, just get the sense of what easy. a good base would be by playing the other bases, and then you can throw it together pretty fast. Yeah. And then when you go into a base and someone did something really genius, you're like, oh, of course. It's like very Super Mario Maker. You're like, what a good idea. And then you kind of like that. take that and put it in yours. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Meet your maker. Uh, this seems like a good uh, spot on the list for, bear with me, this is a real game. Uh, Touch Type Tale. Truly one of the worst names oh, yeah. of the year. This, yeah. this is the fun. RTS that's just on PC, which I guess is standard, but it's the RTS where everything is through typing. It is the typing of the dead, but if you combine that with, I don't know, like a Warcraft 2, I guess, but north of that in terms of levels of complexity. But it's so satisfying to, and really, really smart design, because that seems like an impossible challenge. There's a lot of micromanaging, I don't know if you've noticed, in RTS games. So to boil it all down to just typing and you can hit shift to like capitalize things to zoom in on specific units but you're controlling which units to build all of your resources going mining which bases to build dividing your units up on the army and it's just 
it was so fun to have a couple of weekends here this year where it's like, all right, I'm sitting down with a big cup of decaf coffee and I'm spending my Saturday mornings just for hours, just, just typing as fast as I can uh, and then just playing through the campaign in a touch type tale. It's, it needs more love. It's a, it's a really cool game from this year. Fun game. Fun game. Did you try it, Leo? Yeah, a couple hours. Yeah, oh, sweet. It. Oh, good. Yeah, weirdly satisfying. It's one of those things that it's a combo you never think would just feel that good just to bang away at for that long. But I, It has potential. Typing cross with some other genres at some point, I think, could really get up there. It's a very satisfying way to interact. Shout out to Typecast as well, which is a bullet hell that was also time based that came out not too long ago. If you like Vampire Survivors, Typecast is cool. Okay, I've got a couple that I want to talk about. Something sure. that hasn't come up in any of our end of year discussions so far is Metroid Prime Remastered. Oh, great. Um, yes. Which, you know, is is just exactly Metroid Prime Remastered, but Super Mario RPG is on this list. Um, you know, I <laughs> Metroid uh, I like it's, Super RPG is a little more. <laughs> it's a full remake versus this yeah. where it's kind uh, of a, all right. it, But it's like are there any gameplay changes? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then, then I'm wrong. I mean, I think, I'm not saying I'm not saying Metroid Prime like we can't talk about it and it doesn't belong in the list or anything like that. But I do, I do think Super RPG is a much more extensive remake than Metroid Prime. Kyle, were you so offended? Or do you think we should now talk about Metroid Prime? Or we should remove it from the list because of Jacob's brutal <sighs> Get attack it off of on there. Mario? It's you, garbage. Well, I'm That's sorry, I Jacob. I hate Metroid you Prime because I blacked out when he started. <laughs> so I, that was more me defending Mario RPG than hating on Metroid Prime. Um, I this is like. It is kind of a quote unquote perfect looking remaster in yeah. that like I cannot believe how good the like it it is we talk about this all the time, but it's like it, it is exactly the thing of you imagine this is how it looked when you played it. And then when you go back and look at what the GameCube one looked like, it's like, oh my god. You know, they are like they are pulling detail. There's detail in the bosses in that way where it's like it was just like a lump of polygons that you couldn't even tell like is this a leg is this an antenna <laughs> like what's going on and yeah. like the way that they've they've you know it is even though they're calling it remastered it is like a it is a remake in that it's not like i, I we use those it's so weird but it's like it's a different engine you know and it's like it's running differently the fact that it controls like a modern first person shooter That's now wild. is you can't be understated um can't be overstated uh yeah so uh metroid prime remastered i think you know not putting it on my top 10 but like i it is really impressive um also want to bring up this was contentious last year i'm not going to fight for it to be on the list Fortnite. Uh, yes. This, okay. This yeah, now we're going to do it. Well, yes. Only if you put Lego Fortnite. in front of it, Jacob. Yeah. Lego Fortnite. I mean, Lego I mean, Fortnite so is a whole new game. Lose. Yep. You know, Fortnite had its like biggest whatever, like like its largest player counts ever, maybe this year, even though they did that by reverting to how it was when the game first came out. Yeah. But like, you know, I... I think that this game still kind of does the continuous updates, live service, multiplayer stuff kind of better than anything else. You know, it's like it's, it's totally amazing how for rapid anything to compete. It, it, <laughs> it is. I mean, the classic formatting question. I feel like you divvy these up at this point between Lego Fortnite and Fortnite Festival and regular yeah. Fortnite, and I do think Lego Fortnite is a contender and an interesting one to mention on this list. Like. If I keep playing it and enjoy it as much as I think I'm going to enjoy it, it, it could really climb up. I'm not ready to to fight for it now to be on the 210s, but I do think it's a really well-made, simple thing that's going to keep growing in a very satisfying way in the future here, so definitely worth a shout-out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple left, too. Um, Octafree 2. Ooh, uh, yeah. You know... This is like such a tough one. I love Oxenfree, and I love Oxenfree too. Uh, no one, almost no one else does, like in the world. I it thought never really there were gets more. Like, critically acclaimed, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's the classic again, like return to the supernatural experience, the time loops, the um, funky tuning of the radio to interact with signals. And I think what's well, I don't like this one quite as much. I think as Oxenfree one. I think what makes this really fun is the ways that it's a look at like young adulthood while like the first game is a look at adolescence purely. And mm. I feel like it invites a lot of really I, like how it's like I, I connect with it really deeply as someone that I guess relates to 
the traumas of being a young adult, but um, just the way the main character thinks about, you know, their life and their relationship with parenthood and all these other aspects and, you know, their own family dynamics. And I like how um, almost similar to what God of War does in its storytelling, Oxenfree is really great at having those conversation pieces where hey, we're not like just going to pause and go through the entire story with you, but we're going to get very naturalistic pockets the way you genuinely get to know like a real person. You know, you don't meet people and then they just unpack all of their trauma on you usually. But as you kind of progress (laughs) in that relationship, you learn more about their background and what makes them tick. And I I think it was a really cool game. Um, And then my other ones are really short because I didn't spend that much time with them, but I enjoyed the time I spent. Uh, Diablo 4. It was really fun. I never played a Diablo game before. I feel like the gameplay is really simplistic, and yet I, like, love it. Like, I feel like it easily could just be, oh, it's a thing to do, but it's a thing to do that I'm excited to do. Um, And then my last one's just Fae Farm. It's a really strong farming sim. I think it would have been maybe in a bubbler category if I had maybe spent more time with it, but Mm. I just don't feel like I know enough of the pros and the cons to really have a deeper conversation on Fae Farm. Yeah, Leo, how's your your Fae meter? Uh, it probably will be number 10 if it's on my list at all. I oh, okay. totally enjoyed it. Marie and okay. I beat the whole thing. It's really, really fun and satisfying. And if you like exploring in your farm games, if you like yeah. mixing up the environments once in a while, it's a great one for that. Yeah. Right? For those who don't know, it's like um, it's farming meets magic. So there's um, I think there's the also like a lot of yes, it's a lot of like really smart quality of life things. I think, too, like with me and Sarah talking to the dev slash PR team during SGF, it was at least to me, Sarah, I don't know your feelings on it, very clear that this is a team that really plays the hell out of farming sims and took all of those learnings and opinions and infused it into this game in terms of to what degree do we want roteness and to what degree do we want to streamline and how do we we kind of manage both of those to create yeah. the most fun for the player. I, I think it's really thoughtful. Having yeah. inventory shared between every container, things like that. Really, really uh, students of the genre are uh, totally agreed. Uh, full disclosure, they did give us yummy juice. It's in the Summer Games Fest vlog. Yeah. The team gave us yummy juice. That is true. And the juice is really good. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many yeah, asterisks can we put in a dock? I got to wonder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jeff, um, we're uh, waiting yes. for your sacrifice to the good Lord upstairs. We call Todd. Nope. Is, is now the time? Nope. Wow! No, it's not. Ah! Whoa! I already, I already know what's going to happen with that, so I'm just waiting on it. No, because, no, no. Yeah. Hey, no. okay. What do you want to put on there, Jeff? Um, it's fine. Um, <laughs> listen, this one's. I'm going to count it because I'm, I'm to the point in the list where I don't care. Uh, yes. It came out on console like a month ago. It's teardown. I don't. I can't okay. remember I talking love about it teardown. last year. Teardown's fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's super cool. And what okay, the the thing that frustrates me about it is that it was made by like four people and they made a better destruction engine than any game in the last 10 years except for the finals which I obviously have to play because that sounds super cool too although it's more, you know, competitive multiplayer. But what I wasn't expecting going into it was that they made a whole campaign out of it and it's a really interesting and unique kind of puzzle game, like action puzzle game. That's unlike anything that I've that I've ever played before, and also uses destruction unlike any other game that I've played before. Like my go-to has always been Red Faction Guerrilla, and yeah. that is that is very much just like smash everything until it's you know completely demolished. And here it's like I'm trying to use destruction in an interesting way to set up this run where you have like a minute to get to five different spots on the map and like activate all these switches basically that like set off an alarm because it's a heist game. I didn't even under, I didn't even know it was a heist game until I started playing it. And it's like, Oh sweet. I'm running around stealing stuff. Um, which is always a plus for me in video games, but just like very cool destruction based gameplay that, that wasn't just, Hey, can we blow stuff up? But like, let's make really interesting mechanisms out of this for, yeah. for a full game. Yeah, and it finally went 1.0 when it's on consoles this year too, yeah. So yeah, yes. I think this is like a good time to, to celebrate Teardown, yeah. I, I think too, real quick to add to that, uh, the voxel art is just like really, really it's, appealing. Can we move Teardown to Bubbler? I didn't realize it was on the table this year. Sure. I played it like two Do years it. ago. I wouldn't want to move it to the game thing out. because of that, but I just yeah, like... I don't think it's a 2023 game. Yeah, but... I'm cool with, like, the shout-out on the honorable mention side, and I thought it was really cool. But, yeah, same thing. Like, when I played it, I was like... Rip games. Yeah. Best of luck. Yeah, also, Baldur's Gate 3 should not be on the top 10. (laughs) It kind of had a shot. If only I was here in 2021. 
Yeah. Yeah. I feel uh, like was this says trivia tower sponsor tear down. We only have to disclose if there's Jews. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Also, I'm zipping my mouth and all things tear down. But yep, yep, yep. Uh, all right, who's next? Me. Um, it's uh, Ben and Janet's game of the year, Bayonetta Origins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so yeah. glad you brought it up. Uh, so glad you brought it up. It, was it good? Ben you know, we we don't it. really have a way to know if me and Ben have finished it. I think it's kind of a you know, it's like a me and Ben thing. So. Look, Janet, oh, I mean, bring totally. that up here. You know what I mean? I like, just appreciate sorry, that no one that. is asking if I've finished it because the <laughs> truth is, I haven't. But I've really enjoyed all of it that I've played, um, and I think I I must be very close to the end of the game. Um, but it's an action adventure game um, with an extremely cute kind of storybook uh, art style. Um, there's some like puzzle elements and stuff to it too, but you are a young Bayonetta and you've got, um, what, is, what is her cat demon thing called? Isn't it? Goliath. Uh, the lost, it's the lost demon, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's, yeah, it's very, it's very cute. Um, totally. Yeah, it's basically Cheshire. an honorable mention. Cheshire. 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 There yeah, we go. that's right. Um, yeah, how you can, can we like, forget that and IP it's questionable really name? It's a uh, yeah, I know public domain, I think it's public baby, domain. Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah get it is. in there, put it in Liza P. Uh, no, I, I'm with you. Like it, what hooked me on it is like, oh, it's brothers, a tale of two sons meets a stylish action game. You know, like it's it's just a weird fusion of things. And Janet, I think it's time to come clean. We made the pact on the show, but yeah. we we failed. We did not beat yeah. Bayonetta Origins. However. As we're recording this, the year is not over. I still might run up that mountain and finish Made of Origins. Leo, don't give me that shake of the head, man. Make it, make it a new, new, new show I, plus. We already tried. People yeah, didn't honestly, vote for yeah, it. They didn't, why not? We did. They didn't vote for it. Don't you remember? Oh. No, I didn't remember. <laughs> so that, was, that was our shot. We were going to play <laughs> through all of it in one sitting. out of your contract. <laughs> I think so, too. The viewers I think, don't care. This is also the classic. The way I felt... You know, I think everyone can relate to having plans with somebody and not really wanting to go, even though you do want to see them and then being like, oh, my God, I can't make it. And then you're like, oh, thank God. That was me. <laughs> so like asking Ben, hey, you're not actually going to do this, are you? Because if you are like, uh, now I'm the jerk. I feel bad about it. I'm losing sleep. Away. Yeah, we can walk away. But I my head is held lower than yours. I feel guilt uh, yeah. for shaking your so hand. You got to let that shame go, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> free yourself. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wish I had. Stuck it out. It is a really beautiful game, and I'm glad it got brought up. Um, I love the watercolor yeah. art kind of look to it as well. I think it makes it really, really pop. Yeah, for sure. Who's I up next? Kyle, do you have anything? The God of War DLC. I started that. Oh, yeah. That far. Okay. I started it. I'm not very far, but it has become like the perfect Ben. We talk about this sometimes. Yeah. Uh, hanging out on a on a bike exercising game. Just oh my get gosh. some Get a good like run of God of War in and get some some cool references to old God of War that I'm that is <laughs> very excited about. Um, I'm really digging it. I like. It was one of those things that got announced. I was like, oh, that's cool. I, I don't know if I'll play that. But um, there's there's no way I don't finish it at this point. Yeah, I started it. Hell it's, yeah, it's great. And the the finish, like I mean, I didn't like I said, I didn't save a moment because it's so recent. But like the end of that DLC is like a top God of War moment. Ooh. Like it's, it's okay, really okay. really good. That's sweet. Leo, try and resist it. I freaking dare you, dude. Here's here's one, pal. Okay. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Finity, Finity on yeah. Apple Arcade. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Apple Arcade's Finity. Hell yeah. That Is that a rocks. bubbler based on the fact that we all just audibly cheered when it was brought I up? I think it feels I'd be bubbly. Down for, why yeah. not? If I won't yeah. Make it, but I, don't I love care. Finity. I mean, it's if so yeah, good. four of us love it, obviously it goes right behind Dredge. But Leo, what <laughs> obviously. Is this game? It's almost it, like a match three, but on a tiny, tiny it. grid, and every move you make matters a lot. So you've got to yeah. be thinking three moves ahead about how to set yourself up. Uh, and speaking of satisfying haptic feedback, like I did one hour ago, the, <laughs> the stuff on the iPhone of the clicks and taps, the little shakes from it, yeah. I feel like that's a, something I always forget, and then I go back to that game, and I go, wow, it just feels good to slide this stuff around. Even if I'm, like, inebriated and not really smart and not doing a great job, very satisfying. <laughs> to play yeah, it. yeah. Like it, even when something doesn't fit because you've moved too many and it's stuck it, it's fun to go ah, like try to hit it against the wall <laughs> like you're in a jail cell shake of the bar or something. Like, that's what it feels like but i don't know how yeah. they did that with just my finger touching a screen yeah and you're totally. just getting slowly more pinned and pinned in there as options like, are ah, locked down because i'm so, like, screaming trying every single box yeah it feels like it should be the same flow as like a threes or something like that which i'm all about but even threes which i would consider a pretty smart game to play um 
like compared to that, this does feel like, okay, you at a certain point, you need to really pay attention to every move that you're making because things are going to lock down quick. And it's just fun to have something that feels like a match three or a threes uh, have an extra, I don't know, weight of being a, a real puzzle. It's yeah. more of a four situation. That's, That's exactly what makes it better. The threes was one away, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but yeah, I, I think too, it's, I like how the mechanics stack slowly on top of each other. As you progress, they introduce new things like a tile that can reset. So if you are trapped in jail that Haley described, you can just like drop it and then now start moving pieces. Um, the satisfaction of getting multiple in a row, because I also usually don't do that on purpose. So I like can't focus on too many things at once. So I'm like, okay, like it's all kind of coming together. The cute little part of unlocking cosmetics so that the blocks are a slightly different tone of yeah. color. It's like I get a kick out of that. It's presentation's just a really awesome game to play. Yep, I'm totally with you. That you know what? That is a good bubbler. Don't That's sleep on Infinity, everybody. No, not. It's okay. Bubbler. We get it. You have iPhones. Come on, people. Sarah, you can play now. You have and an iPad. Is it a, yeah, but also you have, have to have on, the on the iPad. On the iPad. Oh, yeah. then it's trash. Oh. It's unplayable. What's the point? So if you don't like it, that's yeah. the excuse we'll get. Yeah, that's freaking gross. I, yeah. There was a time where I was 175th on the world leaderboard. Shut oh, up. Power. Whoa. I thought I recognized you. God damn. Yeah, I'm that was you. That was Helio. Sarah, you got one you want to throw on there? Yeah, mine's in Stars and Time. This in probably Stars and Time? Yeah, in Stars and Time. It should probably be higher, but I didn't finish it. Um, it's that turn-based RPG, totally black and white. It kind of has Undertale vibes. Oh. Where you, the start of the game is like the end of what I would consider like a big JRPG. Like you're going through the boss's castle and you're about to fight the final boss. And the characterization, like the relationships all the characters have, has already been developed. But the way they write it... You can pick up quite quickly, like, you know, what the vibes are, like, what everybody's character type is, like, like how they became friends and all that fun stuff. And then when you get to the boss, this isn't really spoilers because this is the point of the game, you die and you end up in a time loop before you go into the castle. And none of your friends remember it. So your goal is to try and figure out, you die, like, different times. Like, I think in the first time you, like, step on a, like, a little, like, pressure plate and you get, like, shot through the head... And then every time you go, you die a different way, but it's trying to figure out how to save yourself and your friends so you can get past the final boss. That's cool. In cool. Stars and Time is the name of that one. Neat. Um, I have a couple of little quick ones I could do. Sure. Um, gun Gunbrella. Yeah. Nice. It's just fun to get around with a gunbrella. Like <laughs> shotgunning yourself into the air and then peach peach dress float down <laughs> and the story was like way more engaging than it needed to be to have that be such a good mechanic to get around like it could have just kept me with that like running around but then i was like oh i actually want to see how this ends because the characters are interested to me and i i care about the stakes um that was really hey, fun. Like, did you did that. you finish it yeah i beat it the, the end is like a weird like almost like an akira thing it's yeah. very, the final boss Ooh. of that game is not what you expect. Oh, really? No, like yeah, I need to get I, back to that suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> my only thing that I didn't like was the bosses were weirdly easy because you could choose them because your gun is a shotgun, and so I would I, I guess the way I leveled up my shotgun, I was like very strong with close hits, so I would happen to just like not get hit for a, a few seconds, and I would be an inch from its critical hitbox, and I dummied a few bosses in like 30 seconds that way when i knew that wasn't how it was supposed to be and i was like oh so like that final boss i was i destroyed it and i was like that doesn't feel right and it was like the end credits and i was like wait what no it's gonna be a harder fight than that that was my only thing and i think that's just because the way i chose my stats and stuff um and then planet of lana was the other one I really oh yeah too. yeah that was cool very pretty looking very limbo inside um like just a side scroller made out of clay feeling thing i stole that from you ben i would i tell you all the time but i love you called inside like you said it was made out of clay oh, it like doesn't feel like pixels ago, it's so solid yeah it feels like someone was like oh and it's grounded and has weight and when you jump it you can feel the like the weight of the character landing and like hitting a rock and it falling over that kind of thing um interesting story very emotional ending that i really liked too with that like it could have it had some puzzles in it that I really liked too that I thought why wasn't there more of this this was kind of fun that it was it was mostly just side scrolling like avoiding enemies pulling a rock so you can climb over something else um but another thing I liked about it is it scattered the puzzles difficulty wise like 
it's very common to just be like incrementally harder puzzle as you go through the game. But this one was like hard one, easy, easy, medium, hard, 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 easy, easy, hard, medium. Like it kind of spaced them out. So you get little pockets of like, oh, I'm just kind of in a field now. And there's a few easy puzzles and you can breeze through them. And then you get hit with a hard one and work on that for a bit before it goes back to some easies and some mediums. It was it was a nice change of pace and it made the game feel less like something I've played a lot over and over and more like its own thing, even though it looks so similar to other games I've played. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe we're at a spot where it's like, all right, if you got some honorable mentions, just volley them all on there as it's your turn and we can we can wrap up this phase. But uh, hey, Mortal Kombat 1 uh, came out this year and I had a great time with it. I'm a late arriver to the Mortal Kombat fandom scene, uh, but those campaigns are a freaking blast. I, I love playing through all of them. Uh, this one is probably my least favorite of the kind of modern Mortal Kombat stories. But that being said, I still think it's a, it's a blast to play through. Just even if you're not really into uh, fighting games, it's just like a really well done, silly, comic booky story that is like surprisingly well acted at times. I think the writing is fun. It's just it's one of those games that like, God, this is strangely compelling. Like if, once you start one of these campaigns, like you will blast through the entire thing. It's just fun to see the events unfold and it goes in a direction that I'm not wild about, but it was plenty of very, very silly moments towards the end that I appreciate on that level at least. And like having the big gameplay twist for this one being uh, you can have like your cameo fighters where it's not quite a tag game, but you can still call in some like somebody to do one cool move and then jump back out and stuff like that. It seems like a cool way to be like, all right, well, I want to be, uh, I want to be Liu Kang, but I still want Sub-Zero's moves every once in a while. It's, it seems like a really smart compromise. So I, I enjoyed my time with Mortal Kombat 1, even if the campaign didn't, didn't blow me away as much as like, you know, 10 and 11 did. Um, Stray Gods, uh, the musical game, the, musical visual novel game i guess is the best way to put it um from david gator who wrote this thing who had a long run at bioware uh, working on the dragon age series in particular um so it's really well written and then the music is from austin winery speaking of journey coming back all around um also the composer for lego fortnite so he's a uh, bigger and better every year uh, but Austin it's a, Wintry did Lego Fortnite. Yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I think he co-composed it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's what? probably going to be like his most listened to music of all time now. Cause it's probably going to be around forever. Speaking. Yeah, true. It's like <laughs> Minecraft music has burned its way into every what? kid's soul. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, straight gods. It's cool. I'm glad someone tried to do it. I'm glad someone took a stab and like, you know what? We're going to try and make a video game musical. Um, and it's not like you're going to be tapping your toe to all of those songs, but it was a cool effort. And, I've never really played like a visual novel before, so it got me in the door for that, and I enjoyed my time with it. I think it, I think it's a fun take. It's all uh, Greek mythology uh, based. So if you love Hades and you love music, check it out. That's one of the ones I was really sad I missed this year. That's like the top of my regret list for not playing. Yeah. it's pretty short. It's like four hours to get through Stray Gods. It's not it's not okay. bad at all. Um, okay. Let's see, uh, Janet. We just talked about it on the podcast recently, but Super Crazy Rhythm Castle, that uh, co-op music rhythm game. I guess yeah, Haley, we played it during the Gift of the Max stream. But I love it is that. that's on my top twenty. Like I love oh, that nice. game. It is really yeah. like if you have friends who love music rhythm games, it's a great co-op experience. Just you're playing a lot of, you know, just uh, the tracks coming down, hitting the notes, but then each level has a different twist on that. And eventually, I feel like the game kind of runs out of steam. But first couple hours, you will have an absolute blast in co-op Super Crazy Rhythm Castle. Um, mm -hmm. From Konami, of course. Um, and then bear with me. Um, SpongeBob SquarePants, The Cosmic Shake, which was a mm, new platformer they released way earlier in the year. I had a great time with this. Uh, I kind of miss just simple licensed 3D platformers. Um, and here's the weird thing is I... I don't care at all about Spongebob. I've never seen Spongebob, um, but I started playing this and I had such a good time. I played through the entire you thing. Spongebob? Uh, I've seen... That's, you, he's that's old, so, Haley. That's so he's strange, old. though, for no, why I, you would enjoy it. I know. And, well, I saw one I episode. Know, I kind of get it. Yeah, I but saw... Ben, you're, you're, how is really that possible? Um, I, don't, I didn't have cable. Uh, and it was like a Nickelodeon thing, right? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Hey, back up, I mean, Kelsey. That, that perfectly explains <laughs> it right there, I guess. I'm like, yeah. I, I never sought it out and I've probably seen almost every episode and weird. I've never intentionally put it on in my life. That's such a weird idea. Do you like know it through memes though, I imagine? A right? little bit. 
Yeah. Probably. I, you know, but, with the chocolate. I can't imagine what it's like for you to navigate the world and the memes and the references yeah. and not have watched SpongeBob. It's kind of like having that not must be seen. Really difficult. Yeah, having not seen The Matrix. It's probably like neck and neck comparable. I don't think that's it's literally. Similar. There's so oh, many really? more SpongeBob memes. My in partner the and I quoted what? If you know about morning, pills, you're fine it. on Matrix. Like, that's it. <laughs> you you don't have to remember idea. which one it is. It's like, a wow, you think you know about pills and you haven't seen The Matrix. You're right. You think I think I know, but I have no idea. Um. Uh, also, oh a shout out to uh, the Dead Cells Return to Castlevania uh, DLC oh, yeah. that came out. That was, that, was a, that was a fun way to return to Dead Cells. Um, oh, and last shout out, I swear, honorable mention. Uh, <laughs> shout out to another game we played during the Gift of the Max stream. Um, Secret Shuffle. I guess we played it on Cream of the Steam first, oh. but I still think it's a cool game if you like those uh, little <laughs> Jackbox experiences where it's a game on yeah. Steam that you can get. I think it's on consoles as well, um, but then you also get a free app and you all put in your headphones and then it'll play a song and you can play a couple versions of it where one like divides the room down the middle. So 50% of the people in the room will hear one song, 50% will hear another song. And because everybody has their headphones in, you have to try and like bop around your cool party environment to find the people who are dancing to your song. And then the other one is kind of like a deduction game where everybody's listening to a song except for one person has absolute silence in their headphones and they have to try and pretend that they're also dancing along to the music that they can't mm -hmm. hear. But it's just cool, weird social experiment stuff. And then I know it was Haley's how, favorite. How oh. honest of an outlet we are. I just want to say, go watch someone else's coverage of it for sure. <laughs> We are <laughs> playing it made no sense. None of us had headphones. Yeah, but during Give to the Max, Leo, we rocked it. We played it uh, as a big group. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good. And uh, there was one where all of us were the faker, and like, so we all were faking dancing. So it's just so silence. interesting to think about like, <laughs> How do, how do we all, like, we all were just basing it off each other. So it's like, who started the fake dance and then who builds upon it? Like, well, we're just like, <laughs> I know. At the end, it was like, you all were faking it. Like, I think that's so interesting and hilarious. Yeah, you could write essays on that idea of like, we collectively all found a beat that we were all lying about and nobody actually heard a beat at all. It's such a weird Yeah, idea. like, I wonder how, like, genuinely, I think a psych paper could be written about that. <laughs> that's awesome. But Secret Shuffle's the name of that weird thing. Uh, um, okay, I've got I've got several that I've gosh this year. Uh, yeah, like these are these are solid. Uh, Amnesia: The Bunker yeah. is a game that is so well made that I did not enjoy playing it at all because it is so stressful and scary. Oh. But it's uh you know it's it's amnesia as an immersive sim. So gone are the days where you didn't have any items and you just had to hide in the closet. Uh, now they give you items, they give you a gun, they give you grenades, and it turns out it's more scary. Uh, because you also have to use those things to like open a locked door or like you shoot off a lock and it's like, great, I don't need to find a key. But then the monster can hear you and you don't have the bullet that you just used to shoot off the lock. So uh, very good. Very scary. Um, I also want to shout out. Um, this, is a, this is a weird one. The game After Us. Um, oh, yeah. Which is a a platformer that came out this year that is kind of. Uh, visually, it's it's a lot like uh, Little Nightmares, uh, the game, in that it's like little person, big world. The game is a little Banksy pilled for me, in that it's all like, hey, you ever think humans like go to the mall too much? Um, but the game itself is <laughs> Leo, relax, is really fun. relax. He's not attacking your life. Relax, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your sanity's intact. <laughs> um, and I, uh, I, you know, I think I think it has some like several several really compelling piece of imagery um a highland song we talked about yeah. on the podcast last week that game rocks uh it's um I, I honestly i think if it had been out for longer and more of us got to it it would have a, a better shot here but i i it's a 2d breath of the wild you know and that's and it's about scotland um and in the spirit of shouting out dlcs uh, the Sifu The Arenas expansion, oh. um, which is something that came out this year that when you hear arenas, you think, I know what this is. This is simply a combat room where you can, like, fight a bunch of guys. But this is, like, it feels like double the content of the original game in, like, discrete challenges in many different locations made, including, like recreating lots of movie fights so you do like the crazy 88s fight from kill bill or like the you know the matrix fight where you fight a million smiths the burly uh, brawl yeah sarah don't listen to that you won't understand um or <laughs> <laughs> you know like many different fights from like the raid or ip man or something and it's like 
you know, if if you like Sifu, which now I do, um, <laughs> it, it's just like like I will play that for longer than I played the main game. Uh, Jacob, if I may. Yes. Uh, I remember you were really hot on season A Letter to the Future earlier this year. I I think it's worth bringing up. I would disagree that I was really hot on it. Oh, um, mm. Am I misremembering I, that? I think that I think that game is uh, really compelling in a lot of ways that does not necessarily come together to make a great game. But I do think the the theming and the imagery is cool enough to. It, it's certainly an honorable mention. Okay. Love it. Does anybody have a game they want to recommend to Jacob to have him give an honorable mention to? Oh, like the memory that we... No, I don't have any... any, Uh, Island Life was 2022. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. (laughs) All right, I have uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I I forgot that this even came out. (laughs) I have to look back at my last place to remember. But um, I haven't beaten it, so I'll keep it pretty short. I think it really does improve on the first game, which I also didn't beat, but that was because I did not really like a lot of the design sensibilities in the first game, and I felt like they really did evolve and refine a lot of what they started um, with that first entry. And I'm just a big fan of how, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but how PS2 traversal and everything feels in hmm. Star Wars. Like, it, it, it feels very reminiscent of the action and the kineticism of those t- older titles with, while still being modern and, you know. And that's a positive thing to of, you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, I like the sort of, the way you, like, maneuver around feels very like old school adventure, kind of like what ReCore was trying to capture, but ReCore failed, which I still think about that every day. Um, <laughs> yeah, Star Wars we, all do, we all do, Jen. Yeah, and it's, like, it's like, if you could remake any game, I'd remake ReCore, because I know there's a good game in there, they just didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, wow. And that's so unfortunate. Um, my final two shout outs from this whole thing is uh, <laughs> Goobies. It is Vampire Survivors, but uh, as my colleague on Indie Council, Jenny Wyndham, once described it. It's Vampire Survivors if it took place inside a lava lamp. Um, it's just a bunch okay. of little goo creatures, and there's something really appealing about the art design. It does have a couple different uh, mechanical deviations from Vampire Survivors, but it's what got me into Vampire Survivors way after the fact, where I started playing both those games regularly and had a great time. And my very final one is Froggy's Battle. This is a this game is two dollars on Steam. Buy it and don't even play it. Like I don't care. It doesn't affect me, right? Like just pick it up. It is fantastic. It's an action roguelike where you are in a circle. And you're a little frog who's also a magician, and he skateboards. I feel like I don't Ooh, even need to tell you yeah. more about the game. Like it Looks sells good. itself. It is genuinely so so fun. Um, it feels simple enough to be approachable, even if you're not the biggest roguelike person in terms of you know difficulty there's a bunch of additional challenges to that you can undertake if you want to keep you know getting more playtime out of it but it's like one of the it's it's some of the most fun i had gaming this year and it's been an incredible year but yeah the simplicity and how well they nail everything about it even the audio design despite just being from a sound bank like they just sourced all the right sound like i just think they got so much out of so little in this and it's it's one of my favorites from the year that's everything i have sweet how are we sitting, everybody? How are we sitting? Uh, I got more, so be quiet right. and okay. listen. Please. <laughs> uh, real quick, we're, uh, we're going to go through these fast. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 reboot. Yeah. We great should have reboot. the surreal section. Great, you want to shout great out Great compilation, too? yes. <laughs> it, you know uh, what? Hang on. I'm going to interrupt you. I am going to take Jacob's advice. Shout out to Street Fighter VI. Uh, this seems like a nice game. place. To, cool game. Cool as hell. Just not exactly our cup of tea. I, I the the drive impact feature in that game I like a lot. It's like it goes through most attacks, and there's not much of a counter to it at my level of play, ex- unless if you do a drive impact back after they start it before they connect with it. So yeah. it's this little thing at my level of play that I can really zone in on and go like, I'm gonna be ready for this at any moment. And then those like counter plays are really really satisfying and yeah. just gorgeous. Great animations, great combos. Yeah. Does anybody else want to cut Jeff off? Does anybody got one they want to throw in there or? Oh, okay. It's okay because it gave me time to look up another game that I had forgotten. Uh, and yeah, Advanced Wars. Oh yeah, One Plus Two Reboot. Um, great turn-based strategy. I don't usually like turn-based games where you're building new units on the on the um, map, but this one works really well. They they do a lot with positioning of units, so you're like blocking key chokeholds and things like that. That I didn't really know was a part of that genre. Um, and they and like 
each level that you do has its own unique twist to it that, that makes it really fun to play through. Um, Fire Emblem Engage. Yeah. Another, another, another turn-based strategy game. Didn't like the characters, didn't really care for the story, but the tactics um, of it is really good and really fun. Hell yeah. Uh, Storyteller. Little puzzle game um, where you have a you yeah. kind of have comic book panels set up and you're putting different characters in and there's a logic to it that kind of figures out what what would happen based on on the order and the positioning of those characters and all these things and you're trying to solve really interesting puzzles. Super great game probably would have been in my top ten if it hadn't only been like an hour's worth of gameplay, mm-hmm. um, which which I feel terrible about saying because I know they worked on it for like six years or whatever just to get it to work, but um, still a great game. I love that uh, game. For Spoken, honestly, it, it partly because I was going in with such low expectations, but like I liked, I really enjoyed the combat of it. I liked that you were, every time you defeated a boss, you got like a whole new element that gave you a bunch of different new powers with it and i like that it was a super weird story like that game got dragged for its dialogue but it was different from everything out there it was trying to be sincere in a in like a really kind of vulnerable way that they were trying to like set up the main character and i appreciate that it it doesn't work for most people and it's fun to make fun of but i'm just happy to have played an open world game with such a different character and different you know take on story I'll, I'll back you up on that. I thought Forspoken was better. Like, I, it is nowhere near my top 10. Much better than people were giving it credit for, though. It was totally yeah. fine. It's an easy one yeah. to dunk on. I think also from the pre-release hype, then everyone just kind of rolled with that throughout the year. Of like, wow, Forspoken, big, ha ha, how dare you try a new IP, ha ha. It's like a weird tone for the industry Cringe. to take sometimes. Right, yes. right. <laughs> yeah, uh, another one, the one that I had to look up is called Spirit Hunter's Infinite Horde. This came out, no one heard of it. It's a, although Haley's nodding, uh, it's a it's a vampire survivors type of game that we're, I'm sure we're going to get a billion of. But this one, has it has really nice visuals and it has an unlocking mechanism that like, and progression mechanism that makes sense. Like the, the thing that kept me back in Vampire Survivors and I know it was... It was just because I didn't spend enough time with it, but I had people in my chat being like, oh, well, you got to get the garlic in this level, and then you got to combine it with the holy water in that level and and things. This one just gives you a big kind of, you know, like a Path of Exile uh, style web of like unlocks. You're getting like one or two different types of currencies in the runs that you're doing, and you unlock everything through that. New characters, new abilities, you're upgrading all of your abilities, you're unlocking the other maps and Difficulty, like everything is just part of this big web and you can choose kind of what order and what paths you take on it to unlock stuff. Sweet. Uh, and then Starfield. You can <laughs> you can finally put it on the list. Look, I played close to 100 hours of this game. Jesus Christ! I got, shot, <laughs> I got shot in the face by FDR. Amelia Earhart is my co-pilot. I became the Batman of outer space. Excuse me. Like, I had a lot of fun with it. I recognize everyone's problems with it. I hope that they get fixed in the future, um, but it is, it's in my top 10 for sure. This is what's shocking, Jeff. Why isn't this in a bubbler category? Like, you... I would Every time because I don't want to get yelled at that's, by that nine of my friends. You, look, we're not going to dunk it's on you. I'm not going to yell fun. at you. We're not going to yell at you. I won't yell at you. I, Look, the, like like I said, like people have very legitimate with uh, complaints with this game, and it's just that like I recognize and acknowledge all of those things. It's just that this game clicks with my very particular style of how You're I want to play Bethesda game. You're safe. Game. You're welcome and here. And so, yeah, so it's like I, all the things you said. I was like, oh, cool. I've only heard that like the bad things about Starfield and experienced them myself. But it's like I want to hear what is cool about it. Let's yeah. put it in bubbler. Let's put it in bubbler. Come on. Jeff, I put yeah. House Slippers 2 up on there. You put your Starfield I, up there, Sarah, yeah. honestly, I'm looking forward to playing House Slippers 2. <laughs> it's really good. Me too. So, yeah. It's really good, guys. Um, it seems cool. Yeah, but I mean, Jeff, every time we talked about it on the podcast, you seem to really be enjoying it. I just went back to the episode yeah. where we first reviewed yeah, it. I streamed and like, it like five weeks in a row because, um, and I had fun every time I did it. It's just yeah. like, yeah, I know, like, I totally recognize all the criticisms and where kind of the core temperature of that game is and so but amongst we're talking us about bubblers like amongst yeah. us janet was slightly disappointed by it right and then everyone else was 
neutral? I think it's best if I don't say anything during this section. <laughs> oh, I really I guess, okay. do not like that game. Yeah, I think Jeff Thumb's I, dumb. <laughs> I think that, Pansom. that you should still <laughs> go for it if you want God. to. But, you know, I'm not going to force you to do it just to tell you that I don't think you're, the game you picked is good, because I feel like that's also disingenuous. But I feel like the list is meant to be a representation of our highest passions. And surely there are games on there that I don't have on my list. Like, yeah. that's why it's a group list. But at yeah. the same time, hey, you, you know, you can put I it really hate the game. High up. Jeff, yeah, um, you can put it as high up as you, as you want to. That's Jeff, um, I'm sorry one, for the man. way we've behaved in previous Game of the Years to where you were afraid to bring that up. Yeah, that's shameful. I think it's usually, yeah. It's shameful. It's fine. But yeah, yeah regale us. What, what do you love about Starfield, Jeff? Um? I just told you all those things. You just things. told us. Just, it okay, sounds just awesome. Um, yeah. I haven't yeah, heard any of that. Let's gang up on Hanson. <laughs> like, I, mean, I, was, what you I just wanted more. I want more. I want more. Okay. I, I think in in the conversations that we had on the podcast, it's like, like I said, all those criticisms totally valid. If this is a world that you want to spend time in, those are things that you can ultimately overlook for like the true role playing aspect of it, which 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 also as a totally fair criticism, like you know, Janet was trying to role play a very specific character, and the game just doesn't doesn't afford that the type of the type of character that i was wanting to play you know is like i basically learned from bethesda games so of course it's in there um and i just had a lot of fun with that there's there's a lot of good side content in there that are kind of classic interesting sci-fi type stories of like well here's this you know this computer entity that, like, are you going to set it free or are you going to destroy it because the corporation that you work for wants to destroy it and you have to kind of make these moral decisions and stuff. It's just kind of, it's all buried in a in a larger, a larger gameplay loop that that a lot of people like. If you're not into that, you're not you're not going to enjoy it, and it's it's going to be torture for you. If Torture. I can have Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Bubbler, I feel like Jeffem's allowed to have Starfield and Bubbler because I know that's that's gonna get massacred. That's gonna get carved up with a chainsaw. <laughs> we don't know. We so don't that's know. Totally fair. It's not like half of us played Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we're like, this was supposed to be the Xbox killer app. I know that's kind of the rough spot for it. But like, yeah, yeah I don't know. It's just whatever. I feel like people's top tens should be in those first. I think so too. For sure. Of games, absolutely. If you like it that much? Yeah, I agree. Um, other things, honorable mentions, anybody wants to? Yeah, I'll, I'll rapid fire through the rest of mine. Um, Wild Hearts, which was the Monster Hunter clone from EA, which is already shutting down, uh, which is a horrible oh. indictment oh of it. Gosh. But um, it it's fun. It was a fun time, a fun twist where it's kind of all about setting up interesting like machinery and traps and stuff to aid you in your fights. Um, you know, boxes that can... You know, you can go really high, you can jump really high, you can zip line around things. I mean, just fun, fun little twist on that. Um, Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life, oh, the yeah. remake of the GameCube game. Um, this is fully based on that I loved the GameCube game so much, <laughs> but they basically just took that and improved it a lot. It's a wonderful little Harvest Moon game if you're into farming sims. It is... Um, it is slower and less involved than modern farming sims so you do have to like be a fan of the older style to be into right. it but it was um pizza tower uh Ooh, yeah, yeah. Two, i'm surprised no one has said this because i really yeah. didn't play that much but i thought it was really cool a little 2d um platformer warioware inspired um yeah, wario land and yeah. then uh oh one more um <laughs> my own everyone had their own vampire survivors this year that they found Hell yeah uh, mine was called death must die it's uh like they are trying to do like a hades meets vampire survivor thing with like hot gods that you meet as all of your power-ups um but it's just it's another fun little twist on the uh survivors style game yeah uh, by the way, just to keep throwing those in there, Bone Razor Minions uh, is another Vampire Survivors uh, clone, but I think it's really good. I enjoyed playing it more than Vampire Survivors even. I think the art is better, and the whole hook here is you're gathering up minions and powering up those minions uh, as you're going around, and they're doing the attacking rather than you just pausing for a long time and throwing an attack out there. But Bone Razor Minions I think is cool. Haha, <laughs> boner. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. Um, Kyle, do you have stragglers? Nope. Really? Okay, can, you, can you just say Remnant 2 because you're the only person who played it and apparently it's really good? But I didn't really like it, so... 
Oh, could you just say <laughs> the <tried>. words though? <laughs> uh, okay, no. Leo, what do you got? <laughs> Here's a game I didn't particularly care for. <laughs> Let's talk about. We support that. We support that. <laughs> hey, once we get to the bottom, sometimes it'd be that way. Sometimes you know, it's like, hey, I don't know. I I, I loaded this up, right? Guys, uh, it doesn't like, have to be this year. Uh, sixty of these games are getting cut. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, Leo, grace us, baby. Um, Real quick, Wayfinder, really enjoyed it. It's going free to play sometime soon. Keep an eye out for it. It's like an MMO roguelike character action hybrid. It's it's just fun number go up type of game. Uh, Lego 2K Drive, that game's really fun. It's a Lego kart racer that has split screen local for an open world kart racing game with all these interesting little side missions and you can like jump your car into a drift and they use that for challenges where you like have to jump over fences and hurdles and stuff. Cute, cute arcade game. And I also want to shout out Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I think that's a totally cool, <laughs> interesting game. I think it goes okay. for some neat, weird stuff. It is a neat, Sleeper weird game. Hit. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. All right. It out. We're at 96. Are we cop? Are we cutting it off here? We Look, don't I have the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, okay. The murder of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep. Yeah, the yeah. murder mystery Sonic April Fool's game that actually was very charming and very delightful. Love it. What were we saying, Jacob? Uh, I can get us to 100. Sure. We, I also have want. two more. I got some more. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> all right, Jacob or whoever is uh, next, go for it. The Utility Room, uh, the VR game about big stuff that I talked about last time. Yeah. Uh, and Wanted Dead, my favorite oh. double-A jank uh, that came out this year. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to put uh, Crime Boss Rocket City on the list at this point? or? I liked Wanted Dead. <laughs> I had a good I know, time I with it. It didn't make anyone <laughs> accidentally naked. <laughs> <laughs> we should have put that for dumbest thing, but yeah. Uh, okay, Haley, you had some? Yeah, uh, Knuckle Sandwich. Oh, yeah. Um, look how quick I'll be. I'll just say WarioWare Undertale. Right. If that combo sounds cool, that game that's what that game is. Um, okay. And Spirit Tea. Um, Spirited Away Stardew Valley. That's what that game is. Yeah. That's it. Look how quick I was. Done. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Good. Backstage Pass is saying... El Paso Elsewhere isn't on here? Yeah. Whoa, yeah. Jacob. That's... Wait, you like I, one said... dead over El Paso Elsewhere? Yeah. I, I, I found the gameplay of El Paso Elsewhere actively uh, annoying, and I wished yeah. it would end. I just wow. really like the characters and cutscenes. Okay. Interesting. That's awesome. All right. Are these the wonderful 101 that we got no, here? No, put Robocop well, Jeff, you on. Had, you had some. Oh, yeah. There. Okay. You want to add? Robocop. Ro made by a team that very clearly loves RoboCop. It is certainly janky, but um, mm. I'm just happy to see that character come back. They do smaller kind of open world areas, and it's it's weird playing as a character that's super slow but super powerful. And they and that's the you're kind of a, a weird tanky RoboCop, I guess. And also you can throw. <laughs> Uh, computer monitors at people that explode ridiculously. That's good. Um, also, Terra Nil. Mm, interesting okay, yeah. kind oh, yeah. of oh, environmental, yeah. like reverse. You're trying to you're trying to um, like clean up areas, and so so you have to build a bunch of mis machinery to make the world better. But then once you're done with that, you kind of have to tear everything back down um, on the way to finishing a level. And that that's another one that would have definitely been higher on my list, but it's. It's a, you know, you, maybe you, you get a couple hours of gameplay out of it, and then there wasn't a lot of reason to go back to it. Yeah. So, sounds fun, too. Oh. Is that it? Is that the list that we're whittling down to the two tens? That is sweet. We're at 103, everybody. Wow. Everything from Terra Nil to Hitman Freelancer, and, of course, everything naturally in between. <laughs> Those right. two games. Now we start to lock down... The two tens. But first, Kyle, do you know how this whole thing operates? Bio breaks. Bio breaks, everybody, which you can Thank find you. at patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. Check out the tier that is right for you. If you've enjoyed any of MinMax's content this year, if you think us unloading all of our brains uh, to round up everything good in gaming in 2023 is worth $2, you can jump in there or you can find the tier that's right for you. Thanks, everybody who has found the tier that's right for them and they're helping support independent games media directly. And thank you to our dear old friends, I'm 8-Bit. They want everybody to know about the Persona 3 portable vinyl soundtrack and the Persona 4 
golden vinyl soundtrack, which you can pre-order right now. Hey, thanks. I agree, Haley. Thanks. I'll take credit for them. Um, you can pre-order them by going to im8bit.com. Check out these vinyl soundtracks. Obviously, the music is great, but thanks to im8bit and the album art by Drew Wise, it goes beyond that because it just looks absolutely fantastic and beautiful. Even if you're not a fan of Persona, the music of Persona, you would still be cool if you had this vinyl album sitting on your shelf. Uh, but you can also go to im8bit's wonderful online store for 10% off everything under $100. You can use the promo code more sleigh bells more sleigh bells everybody for 10 percent off everything under 100 dollars. it's not too late to find a wonderful holiday season gift for a loved one especially a game in your life find them something cool at im8bit.com because they support us in a big way uh so a shout out to i am 8-bit i did that this year i bought a christmas present for someone on on it on i am 8-bit did you really used our little code yes yeah hell yeah <laughs> okay i can't say what because the person listens to midnight so <laughs> All right, well, here we go. On with the show. We've got a big list. We've checked it twice. Um, and now we're going to find out which games are truly naughty and which ones are nice. Because we got to start whittling this stuff down. Leo, connoisseur of the format. <laughs> What's our next step for whittling this sucker down? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it looks Whatever. pretty good the way it is. All right, so, congratulations I mean, to the Tutans. I I would say have it how it is, yeah, but I <laughs> I feel like some of the bubblers, I guess, is what we first go through. Unless yeah. we speak now about slam dunks that we don't think are dunks. Maybe that's first off. What I, needs to be brought down I to the bubblers? I, I think it'd be easier to, to do the opposite. The I agree. Slam dunks that are definitely like solidified. Because I don't think there are too many that are like, oh, we all agree. But I don't know. Maybe that's not I true. Think, Does what, yeah, okay. I, I feel like the best way Same to go process. about it is a fusion maybe of, I think we create an upper crust of bubblers. Oh, the phone. Oh, oh, we, we have a lot of terminology that's getting some. created and thrown around here. You know what I mean? Like, I, like I feel metaphors. like there's some slam dunks that aren't. Well, there, the question is, checking out Donkey the Bubblers are is probably the move. Checking out Donkey the Bubblers are. Dun yeah, that's the same thing. That's just Donkey Bubblers. Making an upper yeah. crust of Bubblers. Yeah, a crusty the Bubblers. Leo, why do we agree so hard on this very basic concept? We're both right. Uh, hey, I think Vemba. Uh, is a sorry. I'm looking at Kyle's camera, which is losing. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are doing the upper crust thing. That I think we should. I think we should start figuring out. Yeah, which bubblers are are worthy of putting up a fight to to climb their way up to the top. Do we not agree? This this would work. I, yeah, that's no, good. Yeah. And yeah, I support sure. you with Venba. I think that's uh, yeah, a I, I good upper Venba. crust. Okay. Also support that. Yeah, I mean, we should just have a discussion about. It. But yeah, Venba, I got too late, um, and I'm kicking myself for taking so long. Like I played it a little bit in a preview event. I was like, ah, it seems all right. Um, but it really, it really floored me. Short experience, but yes, a uh, story of an immigrant family dealing with change. The mother Venba being stressed out about trying to you know, keep her culture intact while also trying to raise a good kid, which I understand is a sensitive topic. It's a lot of parenting stuff that's really hitting home, and I apologize for being emotional this year about this stuff. Um, but I also think the kid's perspective yes. is equally in there, and yeah, it's really yeah. because it's the kid struggling with, like, wanting to assimilate, you know, at least when he's a kid and, like, not be different, but then, like, coming back an adult and kind of realizing that he, like didn't you know like wishes wishes he had you know focused more on like the stuff his mom was trying to give him and stuff yeah and yeah that's why i liked it it's a first and se second generation immigrant story at the same time right and, and those are both two very different experiences even though the same family is experiencing the same thing in such different ways just based on when they were born but also it's I think that's Interesting. It's freaking fun. Like, you know, when you're cooking and the music is blasting and the music yeah. rules putting stuff together. And I think having such an interesting idea of using cooking as a puzzle for a video game that I had never really seen before, but I think it, it, it's a it's a fun mechanic going throughout this whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I had a great time with Vimba. And it's, it's like maybe two hours um, and I cried twice, yes. which is a huge feat to do in a short game. She hasn't cried so. in years. You, you broke the That's seal right. on Kelsey. Um, yeah, I, Jacob, 
I feel like you're going to say a ding. A, my ding as well is at times I found it to be a little obtuse with the cooking where it's like, I'm just going to fail and then just eventually just give me the hint, tell me what to do. And like, it's a, maybe a slight failure of the game design puzzle wise when they have a big prompt at all times, like just hit here for a hint. Everybody will tell you exactly how to cook this and you can move uh, on. No, I think that's uh, you not being a good cook. Uh, my, oh, yeah. my complaint is not enough cooking. Like mm. genuinely, I I like I really wanted that game to be more about food than it ultimately was, and I think I think its runtime is a benefit in a lot of ways. But like, you maybe do six or seven meals, sure, you know, and it's like I indie games they're hard to make, whatever. But it's like they're so beautifully animated, and the food is so kind of interesting, and not the typical video game food that you see being made. I just like I wanted more. But maybe that's, you know, that's a positive because it did it so well. Yeah. And I'm glad they announced Venba too. I think it's going to be sweet. That's not true. That was a bad joke. Uh, what else do we see as a... I got really excited. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Can you read in this up, upper crust? Because crusty just sounds negative. Like you never want things to be crusty. I want I want my food to be crusty. Oh, I want like my crusted? pizza to be crusty. What if mm. bub when bubblers yeah. come up, it's foam? What about the foamers? No, that mm. makes too much sense, Haley. We're, We're looking not for interested. random nouns <laughs> to smatter together. Bubblers. <laughs> God, I'm getting uh, hungry. Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> uh, what else is in this batch that seems egregious to not be a slam dunk? Did I suggest Dredge? I was looking at Dredge. I, I think you can make a case for Dredge. I think, um, I think a lot of us played Dredge. Maybe not everyone liked the gameplay loop the same, but I think we can all agree that's a pretty unique game that tried some really interesting things that I think hit. Like, I think it's Insanity Meter and what it does with its gameplay with, like, the ocean being the scariest thing and, like, you had to come home to light. Like, a light, like, a lighthouse had a specific purpose in a game, which I liked. Like, I actually used the lighthouse to to get out of the ocean, which I really liked. That made yeah. me feel like a fisherman. I was like, oh, wow. I'd, like, where's the lighthouse? <laughs> ah, like, trying to get your bearings based on that. Like, even just a moment like that made me really like that game. Even if it did get repetitive sometimes, like, yeah, you're kind of just going out and, and finding resources and blah, blah, blah. But it it had some unique moments that I yeah. think maybe make it a bit more upper crusty than just a bubbler. It's interesting you say unique, though, because to me, who didn't play that much of Dredge, it's like Dredge and Dave the Diver are kind of interchangeable, and Dave the Diver is like the version of that that we most of us liked more. I mean, interchangeable, oh. that's a little... I'm, yeah, why do you say it's interesting? Well, I find those interchangeable. Like Except it meant freelancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, any of these okay, can go anywhere. <laughs> you, you, you kind of made me confused and you brought me right back in. So now I agree. They're both with actually. water. And I think they start on their face to be the same. I didn't actually spend much time with Dave the Diver. So that's mm. all y'all. Um, I mean, everyone says it's awesome. So like, I guess that's probably true. Um, but I, I feel like it's a lot more simplistic than Dave the Diver, which I guess could be seen mm -hmm. as negative. But to me, I like that it really focuses in on one core mechanic. Like I think... A lot of the conversation around Dave the Diver has been like, oh, it does so many things, but like I like that Dredge just does that one thing really well. And I feel like it's something that easily, like to Haley's point, we've seen a million times, like there's so much fishing, but I'm not gonna lie, one, I like it in every game. That's just me as a player. <laughs> like I love to fish and I think this gave you a different angle for it. it. It has like a really cool vibe to it. And sure, we have RE4 Remake on here, but I still like the RE inventory management system. Mm -hmm. You get to do that with fishing. So I just... I really True. liked it a lot, but yeah. I didn't see it through, admittedly. But I, I feel like it's worth at least considering. Uh, might not make it. Sure. But I, I really yeah. Like it's it. It, sorry to be reductive. I just it's kind of hard to picture two tens with Dave the Diver and Dredge on it. I hmm. think. No, I mean I definitely don't. I'd be a little surprised if it ends up making it, but I I did enjoy it to the degree that I feel like we'll just write it on the spot, even if it doesn't end up, you yeah, know, moving all the way up there. I think Dredge. I mean, we did the GDC podcast, and we're all so red hot on it. I don't think there's a game that I fell off of harder in terms of like going in so hot like the first hour or so I was like yes 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 and then uh I, it's a short game but also I didn't finish it I was like you know what if I'm just running around and getting attacked for the 14th time and okay now I gotta haul my stupid broken boat all the way back like I, it I dropped off hard and it broke my heart a little bit with dredge I I feel exactly the same way I think the um at at some point you reach the kind of like the the end of the mechanical loop of like i'm gonna go catch a fish and then i'm gonna sell it and buy more stuff for my boat and you have to start doing like the story quest things or maybe ideally you're doing both at the same time but it's like at some point i kind of like had everything i i didn't need to like catch fish anymore and i just needed to go around and like light torches and like find things on the map and it's like as soon as i started doing that everything about the night cycle became very annoying and it was just kind of like 
I, I don't have enough time to like go out and look around for the thing to do and do this and get back and I'm going insane and my engine's getting damaged. Yeah. And it, it, it just like, yeah, I it was like the the loop kind of crumbled after a couple hours and I'm with you and that I found it super disappointing because I was so in at the beginning. But then I just like I did not finish that game and I like I, I pushed for a while and I was just like, I'm not enjoying this at all. Yeah, I'm with you. Um. I, I'll, I'll put it in the upper crust bubblers, but it's it's good to know what where we're at as a group. Sentence. I I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but yeah, happy happy to know we're get you off my freaking back. I'll put it in the upper crust bubblers, but better not hear a peep <laughs> when we get, get over to the down to earth dusty doublers. <laughs> okay, can somebody type out down to earth dusty doublers, please? Well, what's what's egregious? I think um, I'd like to push up. humanity up. Ooh. I think humanity was a really cool, and I I just got to it like last week, um, and regret that I had not played it sooner. It's just a really fun, um, very interesting game. I agree with Jacob's take on the sort of like Katamari weirdness with it. Like you just the everything from the soundtrack to the like what you're actually doing and what how all the animations of the humans just you know lemmingsing off a cliff and whatever like it's it's just a very fun little puzzle game and i found that even when i was having trouble with the puzzle i was still just like having a good time the whole time because just watching watching all of these humans this mass of humans just like be idiots is fun too so <laughs> yeah it's got kids energy to it for sure if people have played that little mobile puzzle game from yeah. a number of years ago i think also it feels the way a mcdonald's sprite tastes like there's something like there's something that like reaches like crispy my brain. That's yes, good. that it tastes like it human is beings. Just really delightful. Funny. Yeah, it's bubbly. And that where you get like sixty percent through the bottle, you get sort of like a little frustrated with uh, how tedious it can be. I'm with you, Kyle. <laughs> hey, I didn't put it up. There. I'm just saying I, I vibed with it. It might not be my <laughs> egregious glance, but I did actually really like humanity a lot. Um, Kyle, it's a it's a valid point. I mean, I, it's in my top five, ten like sure. easily, but like. You start fighting in the middle of that game, and the fighting puzzles are less satisfying mm. to complete sometimes than the like Lemmings puzzles. So, Jacob, I mean, where where are you at? I mean, Kelsey volunteered I would, it. But... I would love to see it at like nineteen. Okay, you know, sure. but uh, and I'd be totally uh, happy with uh, that. Like, I don't think it needs to be. It's in my top ten, but that's not, but barely. Mm-hmm. So. Upper crust bubbler is a great place for it right now. Okay, great. Uh, I, I didn't play it, I didn't touch it, but uh, Passion for the Finals seems pretty strong to me. And Leo is the only one who played it? I thought Jacob played it a lot too. I, okay. I, I don't, I don't want to be... I keep feel like I keep coming in being like dunking on games. The Finals for me is like a game that you... I'm not good enough to enjoy, which I okay. kind of view as a failing of the game. Like I do, I do think that like Leo is just kind of like a a master of this kind of competitive multiplayer shooter. And like there's, I'm not, and there's some that I can still have a really good time with. And it's like the finals is it's, it's hard to have as much fun if you're like, not as skilled at like shooting, uh, at least, at least for me where I just like, I found it pretty frustrating. Yeah, I, I think the gameplay loop is really solid of hitting constant sick, nasty headshots and doing tactical genius plays <laughs> right, that right. reward you with a victory from the match. But I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't die if it wasn't on the list. I, oh, I okay. love it. I'm going to keep loving it. I'll keep loving it more. I think where we'll see it again is best thing for next year for some of its cosmetics. It's doing cool stuff with cosmetics. What There's an stuff? SMG skin that prints out a receipt every time you get a kill that has the person's gamer tag on it. Ooh, <laughs> not the CVS receipt. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And there's a skit, there's the throwing knife weapon and there's something in the battle pass that turns it into playing cards with and all the cool skins have totally unique animations. It's like a lot of games like that are about getting grinding for really stupid skins, which God bless them. It's fun to have a stupid skin and make your friends laugh, but it's refreshing to have like, oh, this looks cool. I want to have this to be cool. <laughs> Uh, I think it's a a little bit egregious that Jusant is so low. That feels like That's an upper I was going to float that one, yeah. Yeah, how are we feeling as a group about that? I like Jusant. Push it up. Um, and uh, yeah, as, it, as it's climbing up, uh, grab it. Cocoon okay. and pull it up too. Okay, well, we'll definitely grab it for the alley. But sorry, Kelsey, what were you saying about Jusant? <laughs> sorry, Kelsey. Oh, I, I, I 
I didn't vibe with it. Okay. Um, but I that's I mean that's okay. I just I tried it and I was like this feels tedious rather than rewarding. Like I heard the podcast discussions and um it's on Game Pass so just downloaded it because of that and was like all right, let me give this a shot and bounced off in like 35 minutes. I was like this just doesn't Yeah. This is not a fun thing to do in a video game in my opinion is like figure out where to place your hands over and over again. It is, <laughs> if you're not into the basic climbing, that is the game. But I think it, yeah. it's just, it was such a surprise this year. And I think it was just a good example of starting out. It's like, okay, we're going to do a little climbing. Okay, that's cool. You have individual control over your hands. Got it, got it, got it. Kind of like grow home. But then it's like, how can they make this fun over an entire game? And I feel like it's just a really smart piece of design that throughout the entire experience has kept layering on more and more different ideas. And they kept it engaging throughout that, even though ultimately you are climbing. But I mean, early on, just like the first time that you're like setting the line and then crawling down and doing like a big run to like jump and grab onto the next thing. And then as it gets kind of stranger and stranger as it goes on, that story in the notes did uh, zero for me. Um, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think just the, the core idea of like, hey, you want some motivation for a game? Climb to the top of this thing and it'll be engaging the entire way throughout it. It, it got me. And the music is so freaking fantastic. That Repelling a down a wall, jumping off of it and landing lower and jumping and landing lower is yeah. something that since I saw it as a kid was like, that looks like the most fun thing to do in the world. And this game really nails that feeling with the rope physics and everything. That's like punching above its weight as an indie, I think, how well that rope works. Yeah, yeah. I think it maneuvers well, and I think there is something really compelling about the world. Like, it's the game I really didn't like much, but really want to finish. And I think there's something to be said about that fact. Sure. But, um, yeah, narratively, I think the note system is really, really needs to be edited down. I think it's yeah. so overbearing and overwhelming. It's so mm. hard to piece together. I think it's, a, frankly, I find the narrative structure a little bit sloppy in that way. I think also they... Tr uh, the trade-off for aesthetics versus telegraphing is not one that they succeeded at super well. I think there's a lot of areas where it's like, can I go here? Can I not go here? And it's like they want it to be so seamless. I think it lacks yeah. viewpoints in that way. I do enjoy the traversal, but it is very, it is a very like simplistic kind of thing. And I've liked other, you know, I, I think Jacob's Journey comparison is apt in many ways, but at the same time, I can't help but think of the mini games that succeeded, in my opinion, well over mm. Jusant. Um, but yeah, yeah I, that's my feeling of it. I hear you. And as much as I enjoyed the game, I mean, I will say I was really frustrated by like the leaping at times. It was a lot of like, okay, sleep up here and grab this. And, like, I don't know if I was doing it wrong. That's the entire game. I just felt like <laughs> the the leaping and the grabbing uh, up to like a ledge that's above you. I had a really tough time with it, and that was uh, like a big chunk of the game. Thing? Yeah, yeah. Even when you're multiple yeah. jumping, it's just I was struggling. The pen a lot is with very that. cute though, and that I really appreciate that a little chirps. Great blob, great blob. Yeah. Okay. Good, Good to know where we're at. So, by the way, feel free everybody to rearrange these upper crust bubblers if you feel like this is not a correct tone for where our enthusiasm's at overall. Uh, well, I would be remiss if I didn't fight for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just anything to stop Kyle's cocoon from moving up. Um, I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, <but it's> <laughs> um, yeah, so did anybody else play Texas Chainsaw? Okay. Doesn't disqualify it. Uh -oh. We're trying to measure passion. Hey, not you can I can't prove that it's not whatever you say it is, Haley. So go yeah. for it. <laughs> here's here's my question okay, about like, this. You you outlined it earlier yeah. and you did a beautiful job. Is it just I really like Dead by Daylight and this is a pretty fun version of that? No, it has its own things that make it fun. Like it's unlike Dead by Daylight, this is very much a game where you have to think on your feet because things change really fast. It's literally like you're in a horror game. It's or a horror movie. It's the most I'm in a horror movie, but I'm playing a game energy that a game has given to me. So like like on any given moment, it's like, oh, I have a path I really prefer when I'm on this map. So I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna try to do that path. I know if I go into the living room where grandpa is. As if I don't get too close to him, I can go get that fuse box and go up to the attic, turn it on, and then all of our friends can leave right away. Like, this is the best case scenario. I start running up the stairs. I, I'm unlocking. I'm Connie, so I'm the best at unlocking. And, and Michael, my partner, he's going to handle the – he'll be – 
taking all the heat and making a lot of noise so they go over to the other side oh no the, they're standing on the stairs oh i gotta twist okay i'll go this way <laughs> oh no like they're leveling up grandpa too fast and giving him too much blood we need to counteract that you're just by... making stuff up now <laughs> grandpa, no, like, literally. Powerful. <laughs> so, let's go back down because they're not really focusing the basement anymore and turn on this this other water pressure valve so that the pipe bursts so we can go out that other way but oh no now they're focusing that like it's so much of that and it's really fun and then it gets to a point even where sometimes if you're the last person in dead by daylight and there's still a lot to do it can be like ugh, like okay i give up like you walk out and you teabag like please have mercy on me and let me free and they'll sometimes <laughs> let you go but usually they kill you in this like you can still survive if you're like the stereotypical last girl or whatever you know like in horror and you can still get out and like things your friends did before they died can still help you because they'd be like no Haley, i opened that gate go that way go that way because they watch you as they're dead and i've even played this with like randoms and i've been in chat and that or like voice comms because no one talks in voice comms for some reason but i do and i'll be like no connie <laughs> connie if you go left i already opened that and they'll like listen to you and you're like yeah when they get out you genuinely are like you did it you know they're like running down the street holding their guts in and like Bubba's <laughs> in the background waving his thing around really pissed it's like it's genuinely adrenaline inducing and it's so fun and I loved it it's a shame it's not upper crust bubbler material no it's up there it's up there you made it, you made it, you made it. <laughs> I'm not hearing what makes it up mm. and no, yeah. uh, <laughs> cocoon yeah cocoon it's in my top 10 of all the puzzle games I played this year humanity Talos principle planet of Lana cocoon very handily outdoes all of them for me. Oh, Viewfinder's in that list, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just really like that game a lot. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed I it. I didn't finish it. Um, and I apologize for that sentiment coming up a lot, but it seemed like a cool cool design that didn't didn't floor me, I guess, is where I, I'm at. Yeah, I think, the, I think the puzzles are are boring. Like, I, mm. I really I really like the design. I think the way that it ends is cool. I love how it kind of, like, it, it really leans into abstraction and, like, cosmic forces in a neat way. But it's, like, I, it, 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 it kind of, like, describing some of the puzzles is cool that eventually you're walking around with, like, worlds within worlds and, like, putting them down. But, like, ultimately it's just, like, carry an orb to one place in one world and jump out and do something else in a different world. And it's like yeah. the, the whole game is just carrying orbs. And at some point I was like, I, I I'm kind of done with this. Sure. Um, yeah. This I, is... I, I, I appreciate that simplicity in, in puzzle games often. I think that's why humanity was tough for me because there's too many variables. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, that's personal preference when it comes down to ultimately. I think. This is the one that I, it, I'm negative on this time. Uh, I, it's really pretty and I don't mind puzzles being easy at all. It's just the it really I couldn't shake the feeling that I had done these exact puzzles before in hmm. games. Done these exact puzzles, faced these exact same bosses with the same attack waves. It was like it's one thing for it to be easy, it's another thing for it's like this is not besides the portal stuff which was cool, the throwing the orbs down or whatever, that was cool and well done. But yeah, I couldn't shake the feeling of yeah. This is not a new experience. I've done Leo that. famous famously Leo, you do not like puzzles where you have to pick up a box, you know, and move it. Like that's like you you hate that. <laughs> they are right? such well dressed up box pushing. <laughs> yeah. It's really something. <laughs> but it is pretty sweet in that game when you're fighting a boss though, and then you die and it just like gets thrown out to the world mm -hmm. and it's all mm -hmm. continuous. There's not really like a game over screen. Like you know, the presentation in Cocoon is just near perfect. It's not worth uh discounting that. Just the idea like there's totally. no text in the game, right? It's all just yeah, yeah, yeah. natural mm -hmm. figured out bug boy. To to <laughs> me the you know, the Christmas against Cocoon are, you know, I'm not going to be able to beat those allegations. <laughs> Y'all are totally right. Uh -huh. I think for me, what makes this special and my second favorite puzzle game of the year, uh -huh. I hadn't played all the ones that Kyle played, but I played a lot of them. I like that it's, um, it almost is like the journey of puzzle games in a way, even though I don't like journey, but for the sake of this argument, let's pretend I did. Um, it, <laughs> it's an experiential, cool thing. And I, I feel like what sometimes isn't allowed f in puzzle games is it, it all has to be like engaging on like purely a cerebral level and a deduction level. And I think there's totally a place for that. And that's why it's not my highest puzzle game. But I think the art, the sound design is like some of the best sound design of the year. The There's a puzzle solution where you like dunk one of the orbs down that I thought was very cool. Um, yeah. And that's sort of why I like it. And maybe that's not enough to 
propel it against some of these other ones where it's like maybe at the end of the day, like a puzzle game is most satisfying when the puzzles are like really intriguing to deduce. But I felt like moving through the space of this game was playful and interesting and interacting with the items was satisfying, even though figuring out what you had to do. Yeah, it probably didn't take you that long. It did take longer than other people. I'm realizing, but you know, that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Love it. Um, it's a cruster. It's a cruster. It's not going to make cruster. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling it now. I don't see this breaking through, which is uh, fair, I guess. I would be remiss if I did not fight for Armored Core 6. Hell yeah. Uh, which Waiting for it. I, I know I know I'm the only person on this. It's my Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, I started it, I to be fair. I, I think Kyle and I both... Oh, yeah, Janet and Kyle. Yeah, yeah. I, I made go. Sailor Mech, yeah. Me I, I okay. be the first oh, boss. That's right, God. Janet, you made Sailor Mech? We I need know. to fight for this. What other game can you do that in? <laughs> I, honestly, that it, it's more than I can say about a lot of these games. So you have my attention. Take it away. Um, I it, it is, you know, like Armored Core is this I have not played any of the other ones, but it is this kind of like legendarily complex, nitty gritty series where it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm weighing like booster size and engine, you know, supply and all of these things. And I think it is so impressive that this game has all of that, but like does not make it feel overwhelming. And they kind of dole it out in measured enough places that like. By the end, I was really, really fine tuning like different things on my mech and looking at like, you know, individual stats on the engines and stuff. But like I never I, I was playing it pre-release like I did not need to go into wikis to figure out this stuff, which is something that you have to do in every Dark Souls game. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it. they really they really did it well. I said on our Game Awards thing like. This is the coolest game in terms of just just their like grasp of what makes robot stuff cool, mecha stuff cool. Like the the characters that they have in this game are so kind of fun and compelling. The voice work is really, really good. And Sailor Mech included, like the customization that you can do is unbelievable. Like yeah. not only can you decide a different color for every part of your mech, but you can decide like between 1 and 30 how reflective it is like how much it shines and then with that you can decide like how much rust is on it or is it rust or is it mud or is it like <laughs> you know vegetation that's brushed up against like you can do so much and um i made a it, really intricate heisenberg decal for breaking that <laughs> oh really okay accurate <laughs> Um, you know, like if if you listen to our our deepest dive, you hear Renata tell these stories of like like the the relationships that she had with different builds where it was like when she created a new mech, she was like conceptualizing her pilot differently and like going into missions, feeling different things because you play so differently with like the different setups. Uh, it's a really, really good game. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, was it Renata who said it's like by far the best from game? Where, where are you at on, on uh, that? Yeah, Renata, Renata put it above Elden Ring. I think I would put it in like my top four okay. uh, from games. Yeah. If Renata was on this call, yeah, it'd be number one overall. There's no doubt about yeah. it. So I'm just trying to factor it in. <laughs> okay, where we're at. All right, that's sweet. Yeah. <sighs> egregious, egregious. What's egregious? I mean, in, my Texas room? Chainsaw Massacre is is uh, the Xenoblade <laughs> <love> Chronicles. That, <laughs> 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 like, it is... I, I know this is not actually going to make it on the list, but I still feel like I need to just reiterate that this is the most satisfying payoff for 300 hours in a media that has ever or will ever exist. Will like, ever? I, I don't know. <laughs> um, it is, it's so good, though. Um, I... After every Xenoblade Chronicles game that I've beat, I usually just spend hours like reading Reddit threads and wikis and stuff and like, okay, what like little things did I miss in the lore here? Um, and just with this like 20 hour, 25 hour maybe DLC, I, I did that too. And like, I think I spent almost as much time like reading through and just trying to absorb even more about this amazing story. Um, as I did, like, actually playing it, um, which maybe sounds like a negative, but uh, to me, it was just like, no, I, like, I love this so much. I just yeah. want to, like, I want to hear other people talking about how great it is, too, and like, whatever, and the cool beats and everything that we all experience. And, and it's and it's north of just 
this is ultimate fan service. Everybody's coming back. No, Everyone and, is no, here. It, it totally could have been. Yeah. And I think that they're, you know, like, like Rex and Shulk show up in their, in their buff daddies now. So like, you know, they're, but, uh, but there's respectfully legitimate reasons. <laughs> they did push ups. They're not just, it's a core part of the narrative. <laughs> it's a yeah. situation. Yeah. It totally. Oh she yeah. breathes through her skin. Up. Don't you get it? <laughs> <laughs> um no it's it really like i think it could have been much more fan servicey than it actually was yeah it was it was all very well, that's your um, complaint about it <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why i was reading for 20 hours afterwards is because i was looking for more of the fan service no uh, i just i'll leave it but i just need everyone I, to Kelsey, know that I don't it's think worth the three you don't need to have that negative investment. attitude like it, yeah this is absolutely bubble territory yeah, yeah. where's it on your list personal list I'm still figuring out my top two because they're they're flipping oh, wow. back. It's and in forth, the top two. So it is top two. That's okay. I mean, that's okay. hey, that's Kelsey. Great. Now you're now you're speaking our language. That seems pretty crusty. That seems, seems pretty, yeah. solid crust. Great crust, a creme brulee, great if you will. On that, um, Leo, <laughs> you did you bring up Finity? Did you yeah. dare? I I really like Finity. I don't know if I'm feeling. Like it, it deserves a spot on the two tens. Um, it's it's low on my list, despite it being one of my most played games of the year. Oh wow! Okay, uh, but I just like mobile games. The best mobile game ever is is beneath most of these to me. I don't know. Just, okay, that's just where I value them in my mind. And if other people are different on that, you know, I want to have that conversation. Sure, I I can live without it being on the two tens. Is where I'm at, but mm. I love Finity as well, too. and I just feel like yeah, okay. I don't think I would put it up either. It just is too good of a year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love to hear more about the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. Because, Janet, you played it as uh, well, right? No. Oh, you just want... I think... Okay, we just... Yeah, I, you I just to wanted to play it. I, I only played it and probably loved it. <laughs> um, I guess... Let's see. What can I say about it? I guess what I like about the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood is that it sort of tackles the more, like, difficult questions. It tackles, like mental health issues with people, like gender dysphoria. Um, It goes into, like, suicidal thoughts. And it's just kind of more of, like, a darker, more adult story while still having really interesting gameplay. Um, Because you're designing those tarot cards, and depending on how you design them, it changes, you know, the outcome of when you read people's cards. So, like, you're in this house at the end of the universe, and witches are coming to visit you to, like, consult with you. yeah. And they'll come and they'll be like, hey, I have this problem. Can you help me? And then, like, I guess this is where we get into, like, spoiler territory, because, like, there's a twist, but, like, it's not really a twist. Do you want to put a spoiler gates for Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood? We can put up spoiler gates. All right, check the time like, codes, everybody. We probably all saw this coming, you guys. But, like, the big twist is that you're not actually divining people's future. You're writing it, which is what makes oh. you so dangerous. That's cool. It's, like, the fortunes you read people, you can, they'll, based on the cards you pull, so there is some randomization, and the way you make cards, because you can make, like, happier cards... Or you can make, like, really depressing, like, end-of-the-world cards. And the way you pull those cards, you can kind of pick on the bottom, like, what people's outcomes will be. You can be like, here's a good ending for you. Or, like, here's how you can solve your problem. Um, and it's just, like, a really interesting story in that you, you're you basically stuck at the end of the universe and you're going insane because you have to be there for hundreds and hundreds of years. So you summon this, like, giant behemoth, which is illegal. It's, like, something you should never do as a witch. You summon this giant behemoth to get out of it because you're like this is a situation that I just cannot deal with like I'm going insane and I would rather so like break all the rules than lose my mental sanity and then basically you get to choose how you want to end your exile and if your goal is like romance power or for everyone to like you and then that's kind of how the story proceeds um and that's kind of how it goes from there it has like several different endings like a million different endings one of them you just all turn into cats <laughs> but it, I just appreciate that it's a more mature story um, and not everything is black and white. Everything yeah. is just shades of gray. And I really felt like when I was answering questions, I was like, what matters to me? You know, like I was going through everything. And I was like, okay, it really made me think about who I am and what my values are while I was playing it. But that's, it's also just a really cool pixel art game. That sounds sweet. Um, spoilers over. I mean, to the level of this needs to be on the two tens or upper crust bubbler. Where are you at for this thing? I mean, it's on my top 10, so okay. it's, it can be an upper crust bubbler, but like, understandably not everyone played it, but it's definitely, you know, it's a cool thing. Consider it if you have time. Okay. Love it. I'm going to play that. That sounds cool. 
Um, what else is egregious for not being in the rotation here? I think our upper crust is almost as big as our bubbler. Got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> um, ben, if you don't want to fight for it, I'm not going to ask you to. Is there a Final Fantasy 16 conversation? I think there's a conversation we should have. Um, I'm not feeling like this is an absolute lock for the two tens. I struggle with my own enjoyment of this game. Um, I I am fascinated by Final Fantasy 16, and I think the lasting impact of that game for me is like the performances um, and the fact that it's like I know it's a weird behind the scenesy thing, but like after a near lifetime of playing Final Fantasy games, well, I guess with voices, I guess it hasn't been that long. Um, Twenty years of just very anime cutscenes, a lot of characters, oh, thank you so much, all that stuff. Having like all the VO recorded in the West, like English first, it just added like a layer of weight to my um, uh, English speaking mind um, and kind of depth to the characters I really appreciate. Like having subtle performances from like, you know, the shopkeeper lady in Final Fantasy 16, like line reads where it's like, oh, that sounds like a human being talking in a Final Fantasy game, which as somebody who loves the series, I feel like does not happen that often. Um, that said, I mean, the Did characters this game make you like actors. No, it like it makes me appreciate game developers who are incorporating the performance of actors in a smarter <laughs> way, um, if that's a better way of looking at it. The finals has AI announcers. You okay, like that now I'm Ooh. listening. Um, but no, no I just, actors. I appreciate 16 for like having a direction and taking a swing, and it's totally fair to say, oh, it's Game of Thrones. That's the direction. I yes, there is a lot of Game of Thrones in this game, but it's cool that like, hey, for this mainline Final Fantasy, we're going for Game of Thrones. We're going to tell a very mature story. There's going to be some brutal scenes in here with shocking moments. There's sex in a Final Fantasy game. Freaking brothels. Well, One of the dumbest okay, moments just, of 2016. Let's just put that, let's put that in air quotes because like, <laughs> while I think this game tries to tackle a lot of mature themes, yeah. you can also tell that it's like inherently uncomfortable with it. Sure. Like the sex scene was just... There was no chemistry whatsoever, and it came at a really bad time. I'm talking about, what about, like, the brothel, where it seems like other people are enjoying but their like, sex lives more than Clive is? Yeah. That's true. But okay. it's like, they almost felt like, it felt a little, like, teehee about some of the stuff, yeah. and then, like, the yeah, slavery thing. I would argue thing. that it tackles yes. very little. Right. Uh, or, or attempts and falls down. It includes, but doesn't tackle, adult themes, I guess mm -hmm. is uh, a, yeah. a much yeah. better way to put it. I think, <laughs> I think overall, I was just, I was really fascinated by, like, look, it, the biggest knock I can have against it is like, you know what I want from an RPG and from Final Fantasies? I want to make some friends and go on a fun adventure. And I feel like I wasn't really going on a fun adventure at any point. Well, Ben, Final do Fantasy I have game. a game for you, Ben? Ben, do I have a game for you? Is it called, called Star called Ocean, game the second 3. story? Oh, Baldur's Gate. It's called Baldur's Gate 3, Ben. Do I have <laughs> yeah. a game for you? I know, but I, I got an even better one. Coming. It's called Super if Mario RPG. you said something sooner. Right. Oh, no, my no. God. No, no, Baldur's Gate 3 is a good suggestion. Should that go to the upper crust bubblers? <laughs> 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 no, but what I'm saying is, you know, not compelling uh, in a big way on the core, uh, you know, story front, but at the same time, like, they streamlined this sucker within an inch of its life, and I think it's a wild experience to play a Final Fantasy game where it's like, what do we have to do to just keep you playing at all times? We'll tell you exactly where to go. It's like Dead Space-style objective marker. Just keep playing. Please get through the story. Please get the story. So, like, it's telling that, like, I wasn't in love with the story, but I played through the 60-hour RPG because it's just such a smooth experience, and it's it's an up, up it's and down a situation. It's hour game though i feel like when i finished it i was like oh my god i've spent so much time with this and i looked and i had played like 28 hours and it was like oh actually it just kind of felt endless um <laughs> i think the the side quests in that game i thought about putting in dumbest thing mm, sure i cannot believe how bad they are well like it's, the, there's like a distinction of like there's kind of the primary side quests and then the dog sh side quests yeah yeah I, if i was making a game i would not have a, a category that was dog sh Side yeah, quest. why to each their that? own? <laughs> to each why put their effort own. into creating such a such a category? Because if you don't, quest. people um, ding you like for Spider Man Two. People will be like, "Oh, it's too short." And it's like, okay, yeah. uh, I, I, it doesn't it doesn't seem like this is I don't think going so. on the list, so I won't I won't do too much more. But like the Jill, the character of Jill is like one of the most egregious failures of character. Yeah. I 
what name a single thing about her she like, had what the, is she had a whole thing chapter about her? <laughs> no she had like the fire and ice chapter where you get to learn her backstory and stuff i'm not That's gonna such re- a, you, that was you a learn her backstory her, she had a bad threw, time yeah. she yeah. disappears for the rest of the game don't, she never comes up again don't make me defend jill <laughs> i'm just saying there's something you literally cannot jill's entire role my biggest gripe with this game is everyone all of the side characters their roles are only defined in their relationship to clive Sure. None of them can stand on their own. It's always like Clive's childhood friend, Clive's brother, Clive's mentor. Like none of them seem to be able to stand on their own two feet and like matter in the world without with any like relationship to Clive. Torgal kind of has a lot of this stuff going on, actually. It's kind Can of we even get thing. me started on Torgal's Digimon <laughs> moment? Because what the hell was that? <laughs> he digivolves into a champion. It's freaking sweet. What the hell? Yeah, I, I don't I don't think it's a bubbler, but Jacob, Jacob, did you bring this game up to murder it? <laughs> Was the, <laughs> I <know. laughs> yeah, I beat okay. this game and I haven't got to talk about it anywhere. Uh, <laughs> no, I it appreciate that. It sounds like we need to downgrade it from bubbler to honorable mention based on that conversation. Okay. Um, Sarah, where are you at with Lethal Company? Do you feel like this is 210 worthy? It's hard, it's hard to say because it's such a new game. Sure. And it's also, I believe, not fully finished. Like, this is just somebody's, like, fun project, and I don't think they expected it to blow up. Mm-hmm. So, like, while I do see this game going places and how I do think it's a great game and I'm having a lot of fun with it, yeah, I am not going to, like, push it. I, mean, I don't feel like pushing it. Okay. Well, you, if you push it, you have to push it real good. So I just want to be really clear. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, great game though. I, there's a great chance it has like an amazing year coming up. Yeah. Absolutely, it's, it's just yeah, like it's... similar to Phasmophobia, starting really, really small, and they're just gonna. There's you can totally see how they add piece by piece over the years. Yeah. Can Please. I ask an, an order question uh, to Kelsey specifically? It, is is Xenoblade Three above Octopath Traveler Two for you? Because it, this is so hard. Um, yeah, my my. When I said I'm between two, what I really meant is I'm between four, if I'm being honest. <laughs> like, Liar. Um, I I think, I think it is, but that is a zero percent knock on Octopath Traveler Two, which is still one of the best JRPGs I have played in a really long time. It. The only problem with Octopath is it doesn't have like a decade of my life wrapped up in it. Right. So like that's it has nothing to do with like that not being an incredible game. Um Yeah. This I don't know. It's this is a tough year for everything and the it fact is. that there were also banger RPGs is just not fair. Yeah, on that front, I mean I love Star Ocean Second Story R. It has been the top of my list of, if I have more time, I want to spend more time with it because it's been a magical experience so far to rekindle my love affair with that game. I, I don't think it's hanging in the in the 210s, though, to be fair. I mean, but Kelsey, are you finished Second Story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, how are you feeling about it? Do you think it's a, a cruster? Oh, I, it, I think it's going to be in my top 10. Um, okay. But I okay. don't, I think that if there's, if there's uh, three, like two or three RPGs on the 210s, it's, Octopath, um, Xenoblade, and then probably Sea of Stars is my sure. my guess for the the third one, just based on everyone else's. Um, I mean, I really liked it too, but um, yeah, yeah, I don't okay. know. I don't yeah. know that this. I don't know that the two tens needs to have more than three RPGs. I mean, we shouldn't it limit it that way, but I, I hear you. Um, JRPGs, I guess I should say, because Baldur's Gate three is. Clearly you can say RPGs. It, we should probably limit it to two okay. RPGs. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, and she really likes Xenoblade. Um. A Space for the Unbound, I think, is awesome. Uh, we didn't even talk about the whole idea, but the premise of the game is you are space diving into other people's brains. So it's an adventure game where you're running around, uh, you know, a city and some rural environments from Indonesia in the 90s, but then in a very Psychonauts-like style, you're diving into their minds, uncovering their traumas, history, solving problems for them as well in a very adventure gamey style way, but I just cannot say enough about the art, and especially as the game progresses and it gets more surreal. It's a lot of just cat gods and floating through the skies. Like, it really is awesome, and the premise of the game, like, throughout the entire game, it's like, I don't really understand what's going on here. They keep running into other characters that I don't really have context for. And then I think the ending of the game is really great and it kind of unfolds. Hey, this is what's going on. And it's a a spoiler gate for Space for the Unbound for a second. Um, It's just, it's a cool reveal at the end where you're a character named Atma and you're going through this whole journey and you keep running into this other woman. It's like, I don't really know 
who this is. And then there's visions of him uh, drowning over and over again. Um, and the reveal at the end is there's a character um, who's had a traumatic life um, and she lost her childhood best friend in a drowning accident. And so she's a writer, a little Alan Wakey here, I suppose. And so she's processing through um, this event in her life by writing about it. And so you are the childhood best friend that passed away. Um, that is your perspective on the game. And that's why you're like, I don't understand my backstory. Why am I seeing visions of what's going on here, of drowning? Um, and I've never played a game from that perspective before. And it's just a really cool, unique angle to look at this world to try and assemble like, what am I? What is anybody? It's like, oh, you are you are the personification of somebody's grief as they're trying to work through it. Um, and it's it's a really it's a really cool ending and experience. Um, but somebody it's else played it as well. It's a lake or an ocean. It is a little lake or ocean -y, yeah. But Kyle, did you play it? Somebody else played it and they were a little yeah. less meh or a little more I, meh. I finished it and it's it's solid, but okay. I'm not I'm not going to push for it for the the two the two. I I really wanted to finish it and the gameplay just just the just the amount of running between yes. yep. stores totally. that you had to do took me out. Yep, yep, I think that's very fair. Um it's a bubbler and it'll live as a bubbler. Um or is that the I feel like we're at a point we should start maybe here's here's I I'm gonna oh yeah please last one I think Starfield should get a shot based on Jeff himself for it and I was I liked it more than most it won't quite make my top ten but I I enjoyed a lot of what that game had to offer the sense of place is is really strong yeah yeah I didn't I, I like didn't hearing it. Jeff and talk about it that's the important part tell us again about like the Starfield the Jeff Jeff Sorry, do you think honest. it should be on two tens. Look, this is... <laughs> Don't be so defeated. Like, what, you, you, what you can, can I tell you about my, my enjoyment of the game? It's, it's, I hate feeling like I have to make the argument of like, no, but you guys didn't find find the fun part. Mm -hmm. Like, I found the fun part and you guys didn't. And like, that's on the game and that's the overall experience of everyone. We can I, I certainly put it on the upper crust bubblers um, <laughs> to die there, but I, I'd, I'd rather hear more about why Leo enjoys it. Hot Whoa. potato, psych. Okay. How's it feel, hot chocolate? All child? right, Leo. <laughs> talk the talk. Let's see it. What's good about Starfield? I'm trying to put myself back in that place where I was enjoying Starfield. I really liked how dense it is with missions and with characters and with characters that all know each other and are always talking about each other. And it makes these small cities feel really, really dense and realized. There's no maps on the world, which was... Is, it's fair to complain about that. For me, it was a plus because I really love learning the layout of a city. And eventually, as you spend more time there, you get that sense of it feeling more and more comfortable and homey as you start to understand these cities that are, you know, they're worth digging into like that. They're that they're well enough thought through that that's consistently rewarding. Yeah. There. Yeah. There. There were missions where it was like you would do an entire an entire chain of missions like like there was the mining ones um on mars you did all of these missions and then you could just keep going back and and there were like so many tiers and layers of missions just in that one that one section that you could totally never run into but they but they continued to be interesting and they kind of built on top of each other um in a way that i enjoyed jeff um do you know where this is going to land in your top 10 list at this point Right now, it's sitting at number four. Okay, okay. So, hey, like I, I don't, I don't say this to to call it out. I don't think it's like a bad game. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's one of the most disappointing games of the year. Yeah, like I mean, it's just like. But for you personally, and I'm, I'm super happy that Jeff found the fun in it. But I think the majority of people, myself included, were like, "This is this is what we've been waiting for yeah. for years and years and years." And like, I just was. Yeah, I was underwhelmed, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like expectation plays a factor in that, obviously. But uh, I mean, it it, it just kind of came and went immediately. Yeah. Sorry to bring it down. Hey, no, we appreciate it. We got to get this thing down to 20. People. Bring us back down to earth. <laughs> um, I'm going to just arbitrarily make a dividing line. Well, I guess we won't even make an upper crust of the upper crust. I, I think it's time to maybe let's look at slam dunks that maybe are more of like a cool looking alley-oop than a slam dunk. I think there's some of these on here where it's like, is there, can we can we poke this Jenga block? I don't want to be the first to do it. So somebody else poke a block, please. So we're moving down, we're moving dunks down to, to upper. Let's see if some crap. things are movable. Yeah. Lower dunks. 
Right. Yeah. Super <laughs> Mario Wonder. Eight. Oh, you yeah. bad oh, boy. Why not? Uh, naughty, naughty. If this didn't have Mario in its name, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Now go ahead, Kyle. What do you have to say? No, she's that. right. Kyle? She's right. I know. Look, I know there's defenders on this show, so I want to give him a, t- a chance to yeah, talk to you. But of course. Kyle, I, I'm right there with you. Where, look, to be fair, not the yes. biggest 2D Mario guy. But I was personally disappointed by Mario Wonder. And a lot of that is just, oh. I'm listening wow. to so much hype the star from... Starfield of platformers. You heard it here for... No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm, I'm a victim I'm of just listening to so many gaming podcasts with just like the world's biggest Mario fans talking about how it's the second coming of Christ. Then I played it and it's like, uh, I mean, yeah, I think in the trailers ahead of time, I think I saw the coolest wonder powers and then going through the rest of it it's like okay there's charming little moments but it rarely captured my imagination or made me fall in love with it but there's still fun stuff i loved how musical it was throughout the whole thing there's there's fun details in there wait wasn't this when you wanted someone who liked it to talk about it yeah <laughs> so I, you know, wait I'm, am i not am i not expressing why it should be on the two tens no it i because you're like kyle don't dunk on it yet let me dunk on it first <laughs> then, sorry i was genuinely disappointed with the co-op like okay genuinely the wii u mario games are better have better that's co-op. what i said Whoa. oh yeah, yeah. I well wait that's i mean totally pretty fair. world is like yeah Incredible. like well yeah it's Curry just the, the f- and it's not even that the level because of the levels it's because of like the creative choices in how the co-op works like the fact that you switch off who's in charge like i get that they had to get rid of the bubble stuff because now bubbles a power up but the new way that people come back isn't as good like i like the online co-op stuff where some random person's kind of like in your background doing stuff with you more than when me and three people sat down to play this we gassed it up for a couple weeks we were all really excited we made mario themed snacks and drinks and we were Whoa. like let's play wonder and we played it for like maybe 45 minutes and we're like this isn't fun let's play jackbox like really? that's oh wow. my god the same thing yeah. happened to me we, oh, that's no, huge jackbox ate mario wonder up that night it was wild. <laughs> yeah. i mean should we Haley, put jackbox the, on this list Haley, what was the was best upset. snack that you made from your themed party because that sounds awesome i mean we had like little like s- we took red peppers and like cut circles and then put it on to make it look like little mushrooms. That's but so mostly cute. it was just kind of like cheese dip, and we're like, it's Toad's hey. cheese dip. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> try that hard. <laughs> I, <laughs> would, I would, I would I love rather that so eat much. that cheese dip than play Mario One <laughs> yeah, any oh day gosh, of the how? week. Whoa. That game is okay. mid. Who's I mean, I, into I, this I'm, game that wants to talk. I about liked it. this game. I, I enjoyed it. I was shocked. I, I, I well, okay. You and myself. me, Kelsey. I'm <laughs> I, I'm as shocked I, as you are. I don't. I didn't play the multiplayer mostly because everyone talked about how bad it was. Um, I never really play Mario multiplayer. It is a solo experience, and this is a fun 2D Mario game. Yes. I I genuinely don't know what everyone else's problem is. <laughs> other than with the no multiplayer, problem. the multiplayer. I totally. I respect that. I respect the heck out of that. But um, no, it's like. I don't know what you guys aren't seeing. It's good. It's fun. I, I yeah. It is. I'm, it I'm is sorry fun. that every level had a completely different, unique twist and new enemies that all had their own mechanically interesting things that weren't in every other freaking Mario game that was ever made. I too am I, sorry I that they couldn't that, pick a lane, and that's part of what I don't like about it. Like honestly, like, interesting I think it, take. It's a. It's a it is, I could see it being on the 210s, if I'm being honest. Like, there's even a world sure. where it's on my personal 210s. So I'm not saying it's not a great game. I think the negativity comes from the high bar that Mario has set for itself. And for me, I feel like it was a buffet, but we didn't have really any, like, great meals here. I feel like they didn't let their own design ideas breathe enough. I feel like it is... It kind of reminds me of like a roller coaster where sure I had fun, but like now it's over and I'm just standing back in line again. Like it, it's sort of, I don't know. It's I think I think middling honestly is as much as I get like it's memed of like oh this game's mid. It really does kind of feel that way. Like it's it's enjoyable at parts. There's definitely yeah. some really nice highs, but I felt the whole experience lacked cohesion. And I think in a year with so many great games, there's other games where I don't have as many core design experiential beefs with it despite the fact that yeah like i have you know i'm playing through it i probably will finish it but i just feel like it didn't really trust itself to really say much of anything um i mean saying everything i i i I, it's like i think that the level design is boring apart from the wonder seed and then you get the wonder seed and that is a unique thing for every level and more often than not then you're not playing mario anymore 
you're like doing some other thing you know it's like now now i'm a cloud or now i am like whatever but it's like the levels i did not other than like literally the last like the hardest world yeah those were the only levels in the game that i thought were like interestingly designed and i think kyle said it when when we were talking about it on the podcast originally but it's like they all feel like mario maker levels and not like the super inventive mario maker levels they just kind of feel like blocks put in places i i too and go ahead ben um i was just trying to get a sense of like kelsey and jeffum really enjoyed it uh i mean Again, I'm not trying to be too scientific about this, but like, do you know roughly where it's at in your top tens? Trying to get a sense of like, you know, how enthusiastic you were for this thing. Because I mean, just to set it up, like, look, I'm not saying this is the loosest, loosest jingle block, but if four of us were disappointed, I five of us. This, I don't, I don't understand how this could be the loosest jingle block <laughs> on here personally. I, but I also I, agree with that. I yeah. think what's funny is it ends up being a lightning rod. I think so mm. many of us, like, while I don't like Dave the Diver, for instance. I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it, right? Like other ones, like it's not as stark. I think the reason that we all sort of end up clinging to this is because m pretty much all of us have some type of history with Mario. So I think everyone yeah. has a lot to say, and it just so happens that some of us don't have the most uh, complimentary things to say. So then, <laughs> but I agree. I think in a lot of ways, it's not the obvious answer, but at the same time, I think it's the one that most people are ready to like have some type of opinion on it, even yeah. if it's whether it's good or bad. So Look, I'm, also, I'm, I'm not going to be at... heartbroken if this is in like the bottom of the two tens, but I I do think it's a little wild for it to not even I don't know like. But if, you listen to the group, of, like you know. Yeah, I, that's true. If all of you guys hate it so much, we I don't mean, hate it. I had a fine time with it. Like <laughs> yeah, it's just. Me too. That's, well, the internet's think, gonna say that we hate it, though. So. I think oh, yeah, what yeah. it is is that like the only I don't really have a strong opinion for the rest of it. My only strong opinion is what I was let down on. Like I liked the rest of it; it was yeah. fine. I but like genuinely, like I wasn't like whoa, like amazing. My only like whoa moment was like whoa, this is bad. And then, mm. but the rest of it was just okay. But sorry, I so know it, it sounds like I hate it because I'm totally talking about the hate part. But like right. the rest of it was very fine, and I like I didn't actively dislike it or anything but just get back to, like jeff and kelsey i mean do you know roughly where it's going to land in your personal top 10 list five ish okay i i think Pretty it's like high. eight ish on mine i'm, I'm okay mine's still okay. coming together but it's it's going to make it i'm pretty sure Okay. I'm also I'm at a point I mean, now where I, i'm really <laughs> looking hard at swaps venba seems like it belongs on two tens um, Armored Core 6 to me feels like it belongs on 210s. Yeah. Xenoblade seems like it belongs on 210s to me. But there's only one way to fit them Texas in Texas Chainsaw. Exactly. Like yeah, you have Mario, to fit them in. Yeah. Which is... Which is... Oh, oh what's... <laughs> four off. <laughs> sorry. Ten 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 <laughs> okay. I guess, um, well, when we poked Mario Wonder... Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> when we, you know, looked at Mario Wonder, I feel like it's not for sure leaving. So is there anything else that people feel like might be worth considering? Um... Janet, apologies. I love this game. Uh, the Dead Space remake. I think. Ooh, can't hang with I think there's the too many remakes. Oh, so you can have your old head game, but I can't have mine. No, go ahead. <laughs> Dead yeah, Space, remove all the remakes. Dead Space remake. Honestly, let's just take all the remakes. I'm fine with that. RE4 I, and I, Dead Space. Take I would oh. look. I would. I would do that. But Dead Space okay. is so much more of a not new game than res like dead space has like tiny tweaks that i love as someone who's played original dead space like 10 times resident evil 4 is a different game yeah i, I feel so. i i loved dead space but it was that moment this year of it's kind of like what was um callisto protocol you play a little bit of that yeah. and then you're like yeah. oh my gosh dead space blows us out of the water and then a couple weeks later, you played Resident Evil 4, and you're like, oh my god, this is how you approach a game like this. See, this, but I this. didn't play RE4, so I just, I'm okay. just like, Dead Space is great. Oh. No, that's, <laughs> no, and it is great. Fair. It is great. I just, um, yeah, I'm just looking for those spots where we can get the games we love up. For you know? RE4, is anyone else passionate about having it yeah. in the 210s? Because I'm yeah. oh, happy yeah. to knock. Oh, so we have to have that remake, but not Dead Space. Yeah, like check yeah, just because we like different. <laughs> <laughs> these are completely different experiences. Like, like Dead Space is exactly the Dead Space that came out in 2008, except there are like passages that connect things instead of you taking subways. And like, I love those, but like they are qualitatively different, like game experiences. Did someone and, delete and to Dead play Space? The top 10 card Resident Evil 4. Yeah, that was me. Two. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, I love Dead Space, but it is a remake. 
I'm okay. kind of pro just taking off remix because, and I get that RE4 is different and it does different things, but I feel like in a year with so many titles, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing all the remix tossed off. But like, it's really yeah, just like, what else? On I would, it's I just would, RE4. It's, it's, it's it kind of the same game, so yeah, I would certainly whatever. move it, die for it, move it all the way down. It's Resident it's in the bubbler. 4. It's in the bubbler. Well, hold on. I mean, Dead Space oh. and Resident Evil Four are the only remakes. Yeah. 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 Like why not? I'm fine Easy with space, Resident you know? Evil 4 why not? being towards the in the two tens. I I, you know, I but, agree, but that's I feel like that's for next week's episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, well, someone's on it. That's fine. Um, but we're just looking for for Jenga blocks Sorry, here. You said to edit it. I Sorry, didn't... no, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> um, I, look, somebody brought it up first. I think Jeffum did. I rolled credits on this game. I don't know about Pikmin 4 being in the slam dunk territory. No, really? Yeah. I, I had a I had a good time with it. It's you talk about Janet, you know, games not um Nintendo games not having a point or a message. Pikmin 4 is all about that Dandori baby, uh optimizing <laughs> your workday. And it's a cool thing that they really hit home in a way that Nintendo rarely does, I feel like, for their messaging. Um Here's the thing. I love Pikmin 4. It's on my top 10, but I I get a, a sense of stronger passion from some of the upper cross games. Yeah, I do too. And that's that's okay with me. If, like but, you guys feel a lot stronger about the top 4 there than I do about Pikmin 4, which which I love. I love Pikmin 4. What do you love Pikmin about 4 it? Pikmin 4 is also in my top 10. I it's um it it fixed a lot of things I've always been frustrated with about Pikmin, which isn't a great selling point frankly for like one of the best games of the year. If I'm being honest, right? It's like, oh, it fixed the things that were always annoying to me. But it's right. just like a, it's a, it's a super solid Nintendo game that's really charming, and like I just love the structure of it. I loved Ochi that just like fixed so many things I was frustrated about Pikmin uh, with, and um, yeah. yeah, it's easily the best in the series and and a strong game. But it doesn't, it it didn't uh, move me in, in a significant way beyond being like. This this is just so well done, and I'm having a, a good time. I agree. I'm not I'm not trying to bash it. I enjoyed it more yeah. than I enjoyed that freaking Mario Wonder piece of garbage. No, no. I think it's like I just love how weird Pikmin Four is as well. It's like, hey, here's yeah, a big yeah, yeah. liquid metal rolling pin enemy. Deal with this. All right, now you're gonna pick up a copy of Crew Crew Corinne for the Game Boy Advance and haul it back to your ship. Like yeah, yeah. every yeah. enemy in Pikmin Four, and I guess the overall Pikmin series, part of the reason it turns me so much is like every enemy feels like a rejected GameCube tech demo enemy. It's just like what what am I even looking? Is this like a weird polygonal beast from hell and yeah. I think it, it's cool and satisfying to play there's no doubt about it yes I just, this game that feels like a Jenga piece folks yeah no not I mean it's, it's my Jenga piece I'll knock it okay down. yeah and sorry Janet. Janet. we Marie Kondo thank it for serving us and <laughs> let it go I mean Janet's Janet's <laughs> I mean are you okay with it being in uh, upper crust bubbler territory Janet I, I, if I say no, it's just going to take longer. You know what I mean? Hey. But also, <laughs> I feel like I'm losing games left and right. That is and true. I, ha- I don't know. Yeah, I'd rather I have know. it I than Venba, yeah. personally. Okay. Venba's more interesting, though. I guess yeah. you can take it off, because who cares? You're just small and getting it's things. Still... But I think it's incredibly well designed. It is. No doubt. Yes. And, and to me, this is like, oh, you didn't like Cocoon? Well, can I offer you Pikmin 4? I feel like the same compliments I have of the design sensibilities could be attributed to Pikmin. Um, but... I don't know. No one else really cares about it, so that's fine. Yeah. Can somebody pick on a game that's not one of Janet's? Uh, I right, would I'm, be willing I'm, to move House Flipper to Upper Crust. Okay. <laughs> what say, what thank you for doing, doing it. Wow. Wow. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. I was about listen, to everybody. On you. <laughs> Here's the thing about House Flipper 2 and City Skylines 2. I will be playing these games for the next five years. They will mm. only get better with time. Yeah. If I don't put them on my list now, when am I supposed to put them on my list? I think House Slipper so, 2, to be frank, would be more, more something I'd consider for next year just because I really haven't had any time to play it. And I feel like it's in that December release window where if people Yeah, like I mean, it, it and, came out you know like That's I mean? fair, that's fair. But I also don't trust you guys. Which that's is why I think it'll be on my list right. this my year. Loyalties, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, teach their own. A lot of betrayals I'll be go- in well, history. Yeah, me and Jeff and we'll be, you know, we'll be towsing it up, I think. Um, Sarah, City Skylines 2 is a lock for the 210s in your mind? No, that can also, because that's a similar boat as House Slipper 2, though. Like, it's only going to get better with time. I'm going to play this game for the next five years. Uh, okay. Like, but you yeah, played but a ton City this Skylines, year. Your Texas Chainsaw Massacre? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I guess it is. I mean, you say you're going to play for the next five years, but you've put like a crap load of hours into it yeah, now. It like, was like my like f- fourth most played Steam game, despite okay. only coming out in 
the last two months. And Sounds where, like your Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's my Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Is it? Yeah. Um, have you made your top ten list just to try and get a frame of reference for City Skylines? I mean, too? I have, and it's like both City Skylines and City Skylines is in the top five. Okay. So. Okay, and we force. If we had a little impassioned speech, maybe we all would <laughs> would want you to keep it. But also, <laughs> but clinking glasses and speech. saying speech sounds like a nightmare for Sarah. So it's, is <laughs> is it fair? I'm I'm sort of moving us along. Or, or do we want to continue talking about cities? No, I I mean it's weird. I feel like cities based on Sarah's passion, as she talked about on the podcast, that this feels like a. Ben's like advocating for it. For I am. Sarah. Yeah. I am. Thank I do you, like ben, it I on there. It. I do like it on there. I appreciate it, Ben. Will um, you bring it up in the pissy zone if it doesn't get on there, Sarah? No, no, because I mean, like, well then, I don't need your validation. I'm still gonna play this game for the next five <laughs> See, years. You know? I, the but, like, just attitude. Sarah is the most well just of to us. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sarah doesn't speak for me here. I would like the validation. Um, I think leaving it for now seems appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Should we? F- this is uh, maybe mean. I don't know. Maybe it's not, Kelsey. <laughs> do we do we force you to pick between Xenoblade and Octopath? I don't know. I don't uh, think I that's would, okay. Xenoblade over Mario for sure. If that's where we're going, that's we're right. I like how you yeah. made it a separate. I'm question. sorry. We, 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 don't, but we, don't, but we don't have to go there, Kelsey. We can. Mm. We, we can no, go we somewhere don't. Else. I don't know. I don't know why I have to choose between two of the best RP, JRPGs. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. That's, Kyle's out of line. Kind of look similar. There's no doubt. Kyle's out of line. Else played Octopath. I started it. It's, I, I, I guess uh, the, the reason that I thought so of them good. both I, yeah, no is doubt, like no doubt. they're both, you know, big Kelsey RPGs, which doesn't mean that you should have to pick one, but like you Just are the main voice for both more, of them. Bring on some more JRPG people so that I'm not fighting out here alone for two of the best JRPGs in like the That's decade. That's it. Sixteen's well, going up because there's uh, no one else here. Okay. It's like you're fighting a mirror, you know, like which Haley knows all about <laughs> from that stream she did with Liam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she, she like, lost. You'll <laughs> never win. You'll never win. I, I understand that I'm probably going to lose some stuff here on this, and that just because I think it is one of the greatest things of all time, or whatever, or whatever, um, that. You know, if you guys don't play them, like I can only fight so hard for. I, Kelsey, like, I, I can only be so passionate for so many things. I'm not. Octopath, I'm not a I can take it. City Skylines off if Octopath Traveler two stays. I mean, we're, we have 17 on this list right now. I don't feel like do we need that. to. We don't need to be this <laughs> no, brutal. Yet. We don't need to be this brutal yet. We don't need to be this brutal yet. Can someone talk about Karataka? Not like that. The making of Karataka. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right I was going to say Karataka, but I remember that you guys. Said it in a different Kara- way. Karateka. Kara- Kara- but also, can someone clip out Leo Boyka. saying that and make a sound <laughs> sure. for the company? Thank yeah. you. Uh, the making of Karateka. We went through it a little bit uh, last year with the Atari 50 debate of like, is this a game? Is this not? This is Digital Eclipse's game slash interactive documentary um, where I think Kelsey and I are the biggest fans of the making of uh, Karateka here. Um, the, the easy pitch is the documentary game genre is genuinely the genre I care the most apart about in the industry at this point and really want to see more of. And this isn't just a pity champion thing of like, look at this as a as a beacon on the hill, everybody run towards it. Um, but playing through this experience and zooming in this much on one creator floored me. Um, you know, it was like two to three hour experience uh, for what it's worth. Um, but like Atari 50 was great for like, okay, we're going to dabble. We're going to see the full arc of the history of Atari over 50 years. That's a cool idea. What's even cooler is zooming in just on Jordan Mechner's uh, past and him getting to the point of creating uh, Karateka, which is the game that he made right before Prince of Persia, which then blew up his whole career in a, in a whole different way. But it's a wildly influential game back on the Apple II, like introducing music and cutscenes at a level nobody had ever seen before. And so it's the perfect example of a game that um, it's like you knew was important, but didn't really know why. Um, and then playing through this game, it's like it you're going through every prototype that Jordan Mechner made in every iteration of these weird games like Death Bounce, where you're a ball on a train flying through space and seeing version after version after version while reading his actual notes. 
And by the time it builds to the point of like, now you're playing Karateka, we're going to show you the first build of this game. It felt like a momentous event in my life of like, oh my God, I can't believe I finally get to play this old Apple II game. It's because he's been building up the story and living with this guy and reading his notes. And he has been wildly thorough throughout his entire life of like taking notes about every step of the way. Like, oh, I think this Karateka game, this might be the one that finally makes me a real game developer. I think it might be there. And they incorporate a bunch of videos throughout this whole thing too. So you feel the journey so much more because it also incorporates his 90 year old dad because his dad was like rooting for him the entire time. And again, I'm a softie for parental stuff this year, but like just having a dad support him in such a big way. And then he ended up writing the music for it. It is just, it is a wild journey zooming in just on this one game that is finally getting the treatment that it deserves based on the history lesson that they taught me. Um, but one of my favorite experiences of the year for sure. Yeah, but how's yeah, I, the combat? It's yeah. garbage. It's a trash game, to I be fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's it weird is, that it didn't get on greatest work of art of all time, and instead it was the Las Vegas Sphere Ben. Yeah, because it deserves a spot here, because I think it is a game, and I want to normalize the documentary genre moving forward. We didn't do that last year? Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's just, it's a really, really cool thing that is, it's pretty new. Like, the concept of a documentary game is pretty new, and... If they were all like this, I would be so happy. I mean, like, it is... I, there's not a lot I can add that you didn't already say, but I think the most important takeaway is, like, we often hear about how games are, like, so important to, you know, the evolution of the industry, and this was such a monumental game, but if you, you know, if you did not grow up playing it, um, and it wasn't formative for you, and it wasn't monumental when, like, you know, you first saw it because you're in the... You know, you're in 2023 and Baldur's Gate 3 exists. And so you don't really like care about this old Apple II game. Like it forces you to understand the evolution of the industry. Like it, it, it shows you how games evolve and how like why this is important and why it's cool and why it's interesting. And um, I don't know. I, I think that is the coolest way to learn about history. Yeah. I, and I haven't played it, and I very much want it on this list. Like, I, I think it's like it's the kind of game I want to exist in the world, which maybe isn't a good like pitch for being in top tens. But like, I think it's so cool. Yeah, it is cool. And there's plenty of games technically in there, you know, so it's one of those things of like, it's not just the document of Metal Gear Solid 2 of going through and reading a bunch of things and looking at images and stuff like you're playing every version of so many of these weird games that he made back in the day. Well, and you like read the feedback and then you get to play the yes. feedback right. incorporated, which I think is such a cool little loop. Like you, you play this thing and then you read a little letter about, you know, what's boring about it or what's bad about it. And then he incorporates it and then you play the next iteration of it. And it's, it's really cool. Yeah. I, uh, I'm i getting a little Jenga finger ready and I'm poking at something and going against what I asked for things? earlier. Oh, I just let's, let's clear the can we board. Fill it back I just, out before we no, like... no, 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 no. Let's just keep poking a little bit. Let's just see how much room we have to move stuff up. How much poking until you're th yeah? It's Haley. Oh, welcome to the well, new tents. It's well, literally I, a bunch. It's I, all poking. I, I'm it's all poking all the way down. I'm they're looking at somebody. For no reason at this point. I because there's, there's a lot no of reason. good stuff in the upper crust bubblers, and if we can make more room now, it'll save us a headache later. I would like to hear about Chance of Sonar. We talked oh, about okay. on the podcast recently. I, no, I, love, I love Chances Tonight. Oh, thank God. Okay. I was like, oh, okay, here we go again. Chances like, like, not again. It's the same game they made before. No. Um, yeah, Chances Sonar is a uh, language puzzle game. Um, I think it's a... It's interesting in that it really leans heavily into having to do the deduction yourself. So it does have that bit of challenge. But as I mentioned on the podcast, I think one of the aspects that's really cool about Chances Sonar is that it kind of has the best of both worlds, you know, talking about the last, the last couple of hours of discussing what makes a good puzzle game and the debate of, well, how much of it needs to be challenging or not. I think Chances Sonar totally threads or like walks that line, right? Of it is challenging, but at the same time, if you just keep exploring, you can make finding the solutions easier for yourself. So I think it really hits a rarity in puzzle games where it can really be approached from many different angles. So you can kind of play towards your style like some people may be able to clock things like okay i can now see the pattern this is how they create plurals in this language or for me like i didn't get that until later even though i could have figured it out earlier but it took me longer to connect those dots um and it's a game where you can 
explore in order to discover that language. Because essentially what the gameplay is, is you're walking around, there's different, you know, signs that are glyphs. And then you take a note in your notebook, uh, which is like made for you in game. You like write out what you think it is, something like up. And then that's kind of a question mark until later. Um, the game kind of fact checks you for you where they'll put some pictures and then you can um, slot in war like glyphs that you think match like oh this is a door opening I is it the open one i guessed earlier and if you get them all right on that image it solidifies and then officially translates it for you you're essentially going through these different areas but i don't know if anyone else wants to chime in on their experience with it or what they liked about it i really like how you are the one who puts the words in for what you think the words are and it's not just like match like, what do you think this means? Music, yes or no? Like, it's you write what you want the word or you think the word is, and then it kind of is telling how you view language. Like, you kind of have to start to think, like, huh, like, what do I think is the best way to communicate this thing? And that's how you might put the word in. But then someone else might use a different word, but it still gets communicated to the player. Like, if I were to watch somebody else's playthrough, I'll be like, oh, weird they chose that word. But it's, like, interesting to think about. Like, how does one person view communicating a concept to as opposed to someone else? And does this, the puzzle still get solved if those two people approach that word differently? And the answer is yes, but it's cool how humans are like that. And it's, it's, it's just an interesting thought process on, like, language in general. And I genuinely feel like this is something that could be implemented into, like, educational ways like i almost kind of yeah. wish that this was a real language i was learning me too like, i had Mandarin the same or something. thought yeah like, like can they make the dlc or the spinoff that's like actual language yeah, that you can learn because you remember things so much better in this very organic way it's and i want like some very rich and very smart person to like <laughs> borrow this idea and make like a new duolingo <laughs> game but like it's just this and i get to learn a new language it's it's a really unique and cool thing I'm trying to get a feel. I, there's no doubt. I think it's, it sounds awesome, and everybody who's played it really loves it. Do we all think that, or the people who played it, do you all think it's like, oh, 210 lock, of course? Can you scroll the, the, what the oh. bubbler's saying? I mean, against the bubblers, upper crust bubblers, I personally think yes. Okay. It, it basically feels like the upper crust bubblers that we're <laughs> trying to get in are mostly individual yes. passion right. projects. Yeah. And I do think that two people really liking a game is stronger than one of us really liking something. But if the one person loves it to the extent that, like, you know, Haley loves Chainsaws and Kelsey loves Xenoblade and you love Armored Core... Look, I'm I okay mean, with not all my RPGs making it. We, we're not an RPG outlet. It's okay. But you, not with that <laughs> attitude we aren't, Kelsey. I think you're throwing in the towel too quick for that. I mean... I'm going to do something bold, and I'm open to people booing and hissing. What if I just moved some things up out of the upper crust bubbler territory into the slam dunks territory? Yeah, now you just counts. put Mario below that, and we're good. Okay, so just for everybody at home, uh, now we have 21 in the slam dunk category. It is Hitman Freelancer, Baldur's Gate 3, Alan Wake 2, Zelda... Resident Evil 4, Dave the Diver, Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Stars, Chia, Marvel Spider-Man 2, The Making of Karataka, Lies of P, Chance of Sonar, Octopath Traveler 2, Shadow Gambit, The Curse Crew, City Skylines 2, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Venba, Armored Core 6, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Xenoblade 3, Chronicles 3, Future Redeemed. Um, hey, what if we go back to number 15? Yeah. And talk about that one. Shadow yeah. Gambit, The Cursed Crew. Have you gone back to it, Hanson? No. I know it's the it's just nails on a chalkboard if you're <clears> listening to a podcast, but I, I've been meaning to. I, I think it is awesome based on the couple hours I played. Is it your Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leo? Um No. I mean I don't I don't have as much passion for it as you do for that. I I, I love it. It'll be my number two this year, probably. Oh, I mean, wow. that's huge. Mm. That's that's really high. <laughs> Everything's a distant, distant second for my number. <laughs> the ways oh this God. is cool also reminds me of the things i love about hitman too so I, I find myself not really dying to get it up here plus i haven't beaten it yet i've i've played it i've played a ton of it but it's a yeah. long game and i haven't beaten it leo uh, just um, to be clear are you sandbagging shadow gambit the curse crew i am surprised by this tone i think it, it belongs in the same category as venba and armor core 6 and stuff okay you know, i don't think it's a, yeah it's a long See, like to, so to hear that that's leo's second though Chainsaw's my my sixth. Yeah. So 
Is that fair? It, with those numbers in mind, I love Texas. It sounds like I'm trying to say I hate this game now. Yeah. But Haley Rutgers, loves Texas. I love Texas. Everybody Howdy doody. I live but there. You're Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But to hear that it's your second, Leo, makes me take a beat and go, huh, uh, I think I feel like I'd rather give you that than, than be the well, sole person I- who not only likes Texas, but played Texas. My Look, list as, is as all weirdo who, stuff, though. Well, also, as someone who also is like, brute forcing some passion stuff on here personally like i do think that there's something to be said for like once your top three are on there like maybe chilling out a little bit for all of us because like i want everybody's at least top two to be on here and i think my it's top five kind of insane. are on here yeah my top five are on here so i feel a little bit a little mm-hmm. bit greedy getting a texas on top of my top five i hear that i don't i don't mind okay i know there's um Where's Chia at for you, Leo, on your top ten list? Five, probably four or five. Okay. Did it, who else played Chia here? What do we all think of Chia? It's a great question. It's pretty high on my. Well, I really like it. Okay, I, I can give it a number if you want. I, sure, why not? Um, yeah, I seven. <laughs> did you look at a list, or did you just think of the number? <laughs> no, 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 I have, I have my, I have my top ten. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I really six for I me. like Chia a lot. I, I think she is very cool. That feels like a good territory for a lot of people's take on Chia. But yeah, if you don't remember, this is the open world game set in New Caledonia. Um, we're just the movement feels so good. Like it would be a cool little open world experience to play. And then they add that layer that just makes it weird as hell. And there's a lot of things in the game that make it weird as hell, I guess. But being able to then warp into any animal or a ton of objects and then be that object turn into a rock as you're rolling down the hill as you warp into a bird and then you are climbing a tree and flinging onto the tree and then flying off and using the little wind waker glider and then you teleport into a deer and then jump the deer off a cliff it is an and awesome sandbox style flips that are not necessary at all but as you get more confident with the movement you start throwing in little spins and flips and it's like it's not handed to you it's not a backflip button you have to time yeah. the landing of your rotation to perfectly execute a backflip off of a tree, and that's like something you can do and learn. It's and so it, it's I, so physics based that makes every second moving around great. I also enjoyed all of the movement stuff, but the actual getting missions yes. and what yes. they wanted me to do with it was where I kind of fell off. And I don't know if I should have given it more time. If if there's payoff to kind of the missions and story that you're going on, that. Uh, there is. I, I think the story ends quite well. I, I like the narrative of the game. Yeah. That's it. I totally get where you're coming from, Jeff. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in that, like, I went to it back to it last night to be like, I remember loving this game. I want to experience it again. Had a blast. I was like, God, this game is awesome. The music is incredible. And then it's like, okay, now infiltrate these three factory areas. And then you got to use uh, the turn into a lamp to blow up the elevator and take out the paper enemies. And it's just like, I. The cool thing, though, is in the menu, the you just have an option. Softification of this Chia game. I mean, like, a, a it little is bit. kind of like, but it, okay, the, and the physics do feel great, but also yeah. the ending boss I really hated. Yeah. I thought it controlled terribly. Mm-hmm. The nice the thing, end. though, is you can yeah. just go in the menu and skip these gameplay sequences. So I was still trying that to optimize true. my Chia playthrough of like, I don't want to do this stupid factory crap. I'm just going to skip this, skip this, skip this, and then kept it rolling. But it's damning when we're skipping gameplay chunks. Did, did anyone else finish it, like, storyline? Yeah. Did? Okay. Yeah, so I, yeah. Jacob, I, I thought it had a really sweet ending that I quite liked. Yeah, I, I mean, and it's like, I I think okay, y'all yeah. are totally right. I mean, that yeah, factory yeah. thing is, like, the weakest part of the game. Um, but, like, the the story itself, the, the characters, like, the way that they've kind of communicated who Chia is and who the people that she interacts with and the fact that there are kind of... There are mini games where you are like making very specific foods and you kind of get to see the whole process of there or like all of the different music mini games that are like, you know, you're playing multiple different instruments and the the songs all feel like very genuine and whatever. It's like I do. Th- you're totally right about all of the weaknesses of the game, but I think it has so many strengths yeah, that I agree. for me well, it it would be really tough to not see it. On yep, I agree. And it, it also seems like five of you really enjoyed it and beat it. So, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. get out of here. If it I, is a super simple collect-a-thon, and it happened to hit a time where I wanted exactly that. I had a ton of fun just, just filling out the map. If I may and, take yeah, a... It was interesting because it doesn't do it like for you. You kind of have to orient yourself based on like your understanding of your surroundings. I thought that, mm. that gave it a lot of life. If I may shove my head into a hornet's nest from hell... Um, remember how we all like uh, agreed that Starfield in no way deserves a spot on this list? Um, we all kind of moved on from that. 
<laughs> I'm just saying there's also another game on this list that four to five of us were disappointed by. <laughs> which is Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And I would personally love to have a game that someone's like super enthusiastic about be up here compared to a Mario game that two people liked and a, a lot of people were a little bit disappointed by, but it's still fun. It's still fun. I'm not saying it's it's a Starfield. I'm just wondering if that disappointment can drag it down to the depths of hell where it deserves to live forever. <laughs> Yeah, for what it's worth, I wouldn't have liked it if I played it. So <laughs> wow. Oh, that's a I good, uh, absolutely I should I need to pocket that for next year. <laughs> I mean, thoughts on that idea? I'm not saying we should do it. it. I'm just seeing I, what I you think you're a like genius, spicy. <laughs> personally. Smartest man I've ever met. If I may, keep poking around. I could live without Venba on this list. Oh. I think Venba's a way better game than she is. What did you, I, I, really I don't hate them. Like, I don't want to be too together. You know what? I, I just think Venba's a really cool game. Is there yeah. something? Uh, is it just that you need to take out one game? If we we literally have to take out one game. At? Yeah, yeah. So we're looking we're looking for the weakest one in the pile here. It really, it's just like we want a game that four people on here dislike. Look, well, I don't, know, I don't I know dislike it. Fighting. I don't know if you I, know no one. No one said quiet, no to the so. Mario idea. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we should just take that as life. And to be fair, yeah. I don't. Like, so long. Just to be really clear, and again, YouTube understands this. I don't dislike the game. I had a fine time with it. It's just target me, YouTube comments. <laughs> yeah, get them. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Hey, hey if you want to, please. I mean, I'm. I started the whole thing, but if you want to, yeah, Jacob at Jacob Geller, <laughs> Jeff, um, <laughs> please, please don't go after any of us. We Kelsey's like waving a white flag like over her castle um, in this, but I'm curious where you stand on Mario versus. I don't Rainbow like it, but hey, whatever. Uh, you know, Jacob has a point of that. There's a lot of people that apparently. Don't like it. Here's here's the uh, question. No, I didn't care about Hi-Fi Rush. If anyone, oh my god, I don't care about Hi-Fi Rush. No, that's a lot. That's a lot. I'm just throwing it out there. That's I'm just speaking my truth. Okay, I was just wondering if anyone else. I was just wondering if anyone else existed other than me that thought that game was fine, and if it didn't shadow drop, we wouldn't be talking about it. You threw it out there. We caught it and we checked it back at you. All right, it's cool. Janet, I'm with you. You know what? Just throw Mario out there because what is what is the point? I'm continuing trying to fight for this game. That I'm just being a little saucy. Fine, keep your thing. Maybe we shouldn't kill Mario when we're all glossing over the part where both Haley and Sarah said, kill my darling, please, for the love of God, kill my darling. Who are I mean, but I don't, well, well, personally, okay. I don't care about having Mario Wonder on there. So why would I want I them also to kill something really they like if I don't about, care? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I would mean, rather I have, have Mario already. Texas than Mario, I ha- but. I have Mario Wonder higher than Haley has Texas Chainsaw. Exactly. Is yep. that kind that's, of? That's fair. No, I don't know. Do you feel passionately about that? No, yeah, it's not a leading I'm, question. I'm, like you no. can't like. <laughs> no, no I, I don't care about any of yeah. these games that are Haley's like, pitch being for thrown out, you know? even though Haley's being very selfless and saying kill it. Like her pitch for Texas conveyed way more enthusiasm. I feel like than what I and it's, this is not an accusation for <laughs> your all pitches for Mario Wonder. I just feel like that level of enthusiasm feels more fun to celebrate than it's a good Mario game. I, I do feel like we are we are more defensive than we are celebrating it, but in. In our defense of our defensiveness, um, I am genuinely just kind of shocked. Like, I really thought this was a good Mario game. So I'm it is. Just, it I'm is. like, wow, I'm I too. did you, not know that nobody was interested. You, <laughs> you, can, you can go watch the stream that I did where I beat it, and you can see the childlike joy on my face for this Mario that I haven't felt for a long time. Okay, there we go. Bring there the clip we up. go. Hold the clip. It is. <laughs> it is. I'm sure it is evidence. <laughs> and, and, like, I... I can I can appreciate y'all's criticism of it because when we were talking about it on the show, like one of the thing, the criticism that I had for it was that it was easier than a lot of Mario games and the levels felt shorter than a lot of Mario games, and that does make it. You can call that medi that that makes it mediocre. It just it felt breezy in a way that I didn't I didn't mind and the fact yeah. that it it does have so much variety like I did want a sampler from this kind of Mario game and that's that's what the criticisms that you you guys have for it a lot of them feel like strengths to me I'm with you on the variety uh, in terms yeah. of what I want the, that's a really good way to put it like I really like the I, I get that that you know makes it not have a coherent vision or whatever um, but I really liked just the sampling of you know, mostly fairly short levels that all just had their own little gimmick and all, the gimmick was fun every time and then you move on and it's something totally different and they all worked for me. 
Yeah, I mean, the, the length of levels and ease of the game is not the thing that made it not click with me, mm-hmm. if, if that's to be, I don't know. But we're kind of getting really uh, into some minutia here. Um, I, yeah, I feel like yeah. in terms of what's on this list, so just everybody knows, I mean, yeah, City Skylines 2, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Wonder Vemba, Shadow Gambit, Armor Core 6, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Xenoblade, uh, Chronicles Future 3, 3, 3 Future Redeemed. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I feel like I'm the I'm a champion for Vemba, and I'm willing to let it go. Haley, I feel like you're a great vantage point for what you think should go out of everything. Oh, no. This oh, yes. Hard. And Haley, don't forget that they took... Uh, what was that? What's, what's he doesn't that? even remember. Oh, he doesn't even remember. Darkness, Forgettable. Kind of stuff Herald of Darkness away from you, Haley. <laughs> don't forget so that. don't you hold back. Hang on to that anger. Uh-huh. I do have that anger still in my soul. Um, and I should be using that as fodder for saying, I don't want to cut Vemba either. I really like Vemba. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. We don't have to. I think it, it okay, as, as a Mario defender, I think it makes more sense to cut something that a bunch of people didn't like as much that like literally all of us loved Venba. It makes no sense to cut something that yeah. literally yeah. all of us loved. Yeah. 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 And hey, 21 is a good game, you guys. Like don't I disagree. <laughs> I just the disagree. Best year for games ever. Yeah, 21. But it doesn't make it to the next episode. Except for that one time Jeff um fished uh my game out of the 21 trash and then yeah, brought apparently the default. That yeah. In my game. Hey maybe I'll may, I'll play it tonight. Maybe my You know what Jeff don't worry about what's twenty one because Jeff will save it later and then it, you won't have to worry about it <laughs> he'll get in the dredge boat go out into the sea yeah I, <laughs> oh captain my captain Haley I just want to poke one more time if I may okay. on, on Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I feel like I okay. was saving that from being cut by your yeah. rude chainsaw as you kicked down the door and just started hacking away at it and I feel like I yeah um, I'm not saying you need to kill it but you tried to kill it and I feel like I stopped it so maybe this is all for naught no, I I feel like a little greedy goose with all, like most of my list is on here. If we have to cut my chainsaw massacre, because literally so many other games that I like are on here, so that's okay with me. But I, I also I feel like <laughs> <laughs> no one will let the chainsaw massacre die. It's just when I look at this list, cool. I don't see any Haley games except for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like all of the mm. other ones, we all like, you know, and, and, and all of us, yeah. I, I do oh, really, really true. like Hitman Freelancer. I see the game you're playing here. I think about here, your Dave like, the Diver. Noted. Like you, you talked about Dave the Diver for like I love Dave the Diver on a podcast yeah. once. So sea of I, stars. I feel like that's a Haley game. I love Sea of Stars. I really, really love Sea of Stars. Alan Wake Two. I love Alan Wake Two. I love Baldur's yeah. Gate Three. Right, and maybe it's a good idea to not have a game that won't have its servers active next year on the list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Leo conundrum. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Can somebody else want to weigh in other than Haley? Are we are we killing? Chainsaws? You can kill. I'm t- I'm pulling the ripcord. I don't understand how so Mario to, made it through that. To, to keep be Mario, okay, fight for it. I mean, bring it down, please. I just don't want to. I feel like kill. Mario has Mario armor from being Mario. Yeah, yes, exactly. I agree. Like, I'm okay. Do we vote? Do we vote? Mario? Honestly, it doesn't though. Like, I am not. I am not a Mario armor type of person. <laughs> If, Here he goes. <laughs> no, I'm I'm not. I oh, yeah. I will happily kill all old Nintendo franchises, but this is the one that <laughs> worked for me because it was so different and because it had a level of creativity in the enemy designs and and the wonder seed things that a lot of that a lo- I haven't felt for Mario in a long time. Okay. Hey, here's what I think with that like Jeff just showed a lot of passion to keep it. And more yeah. people have played also Mario and thought it was fun and decently liked it. Yeah. I'm the only one who's played Texas. So I feel like it, it's fair to cut it based on that last push of passion really changed my mind, Jeff. And I think <laughs> I'm going to let Mario stay and get take the chainsaw to Texas Chainsaw. Ladies and gentlemen. All right. The chainsaw has been deflated. <laughs> It's run out of gas. New, sh- new show like plus, it. and uh, you guys all have to play Texas Chainsaw with me at one point. To okay, make up for it. How about yeah. that? Uh, and then we'll revise our list to January. Yeah, and <laughs> just to be clear, because we never really talked about it, Jacob and everybody, humanity is okay as uh, not making the list. I I think so. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm bummed, but like I my top four or five are on here. I'm I'm fine. Yeah, and it's like I from. The description of Chance of Sonar feels like, you know, it's like that 
that almost feels like it takes the place of humanity for me and like what a cool clever puzzle game i'm not sad wow. that it's not there okay everybody the two tens in absolutely no particular order i can't emphasize that enough we're, are we done or just checking in i mean i was gonna wrap it up but whatever you want leo are we, we're we're all this hot on marvel spider-man 2 yes yeah i didn't want to say it okay are we sure? Yeah. I, I'm feeling really it's hot. Basic, on that. I really, I like that, that, that's a conversation okay, cool. for next episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, push totally. it down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? <laughs> it's the inverted wonder scenario where it's like a couple people where we're like, oh, it's not that good, and then it's like, yeah, I don't know, I like. Uh, it someone funny. in the comments named Jacob Geller says, "Can't believe no, Liza shut up, P shut made up. it through no. unscathed." <laughs> Wait a minute, that must have been a typo. What is Liza P doing on this list, you little stinker? Uh, no, I, I mean. Just to oh, be clear, it, it feels like there's no fashion for Liza P. I, I like Liza I, P. I don't mind. Yeah, I don't I have anything that I want to push up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't either. Um, okay. The two tens, again, in no particular order. Do you want to alphabetize them? No, 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 no. Is that dumb? No, it's but dumb. Let's not fly too close to the sun with this Google Doc. Well, hang on. <laughs> actually, I'm looking at these. Yeah, maybe alphabetizing actually would be a pretty cool way to go. No, I think yeah, about it. Like, real quick. <laughs> and you know fish- what? If you want to. Yeah, Zelda wanna- at the bottom. No, don't do, it, don't, do way. <laughs> don't do it. No, don't do it. I, I like I like <laughs> having this don't as a it. starting point. All right. Don't <laughs> do it. I'll fight with one arm behind my back. Uh, okay. No particular order. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles Three: Future Redeemed from the top, from the bottom up. Obviously, uh, Armored Core Six: Shadow Gambit, Venba, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, City Skylines Two, Octopath Traveler Two, Chance of Sonar, Lies of P, The Making of Karataka, Marvel Spider Man Two, Chia, Sea of Stars, Hi Fi Rush, Dave the Diver. Okay. Uh, Resident Evil 4 remake, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Hitman Freelancer. The two tens, ladies and gentlemen. It looks good. That's a pretty it looking look list. Good. It does look good. Uh, next week's episode of the MinMax show is the easy part. That's just us ordering these in absolutely the correct way because we all know how Mario stacks up against Karataka and how City Skyline stacks up against Dave the Diver. This is a cakewalk. This is going to be a piece of cake. So tune in next week for the grand finale of this whole thing unless you just can't wait until next week because if you jump up to the Backstage Pass tier, the $10 tier on Patreon, you can watch it all right now. The full unedited archives of all of our Game of the Year debates are waiting for you in the Discord. So jump up to the $10 tier if you want to help support us in a big way unlock the over five hour version of the best of mid max for 2023 video which should be live as well um and then also yeah learn what our game of the year is and how the two tens are ranked ahead of everybody else as long as you don't tell anybody and again and i had a, a list of uh greatest works of art i wanted to bring up last week that i'll throw in the backstage pass channel in the discord oh links to those that sounds Ooh. great that sounds lovely um and again uh you will get your chance if you're a patreon supporter at any tier to come up uh with your own two tens list um with the hive mind of the community everybody will be voting and then we'll be sharing it on a future episode of the podcast as well so thanks everybody for being there Thanks, everybody, for voting on the Game Championship poll. The last one for the year is running right now over there on um, Patreon. So, again, there's a lot going on on the Patreon side of the fence. If you've enjoyed our content this year, we'd appreciate that uh, little tip of the cap. Tip of the cap and financial tip as well. All (laughs) right. That's it. Uh, Janet, thank you. Jacob. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, um, thank you. Appreciate it. Kelsey, thank you. You're welcome. Kyle, thank you. You're welcome. Haley, thank you. Thank you. Sarah Podzorski, I thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And Leo Vader, I'm thanking you right now. Wow, look at him go. (laughs) All right. Thank you. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching or listening. (laughs) That was a weird ending. (laughs) To the two (laughs) tins. We'll finish it off next week. We'll see you there. Bye, everybody. Be good. Have fun. Let's go. I mean... (laughs) 